Shalom, shalom, saints. Greetings, greetings to all of you, children of the Most High God. This is your host, Sister Dalila Dush Santos, here to deliver the word of our Lord Jesus without compromise. I invite you all to hide under the shadow of the Most High and seek refuge. Greetings, greetings, saints. Sister Lorian, our sunshine, you are most welcome today on this wonderful Monday. Sister, blessings, greetings, shalom. Shalom, Sister I am Mitchell. Shalom, Sister Lori. Shalom, si Brother. K Shalom, Candy Mac. Shalom, Sister Juanita. Shalom, Sister Chichi. Shalom, Atimuyakuhula. Shalom, Sister Antoinette. Shalom, Sister China. Shalom, Sister Shelly. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Greetings. Shalom. Greetings, Sister Portia Sleek. Shalom, Mrs. Karen Gome. Shalom, Sister Myrna Rita. Shalom, 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 Ron Clancy. Shalom, Side. Shalom, Sister Jacqueline. Greetings. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Shalom, Sister The Queen. Shalom, Sister Classic Dame. Shalom, 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 and greetings on this wonderful Monday, Saints. Hallelujah. Shalom, Sister Danielle. Shalom, Sister Shane. Shalom, Gentil John Becker. Shalom, Shalom, Gentil John. Shalom, 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 saints, shalom, precious saints. Shalom, Sister Claria, shalom, shalom, precious saints, shalom, Sister G. Collins, shalom, Brother DJ Brian Nine, shalom and greetings, Sister Nzia Raj, welcome, 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 Brother Patrick, shalom. Shalom, saints. So the title for this live stream today is Demons Are Real. Demons Are Real. I want you to understand something, children of the Most High God. If you are going through any situation, any difficulty, and you are going through so much in this life, know that whatever situation is adverse to you, you are actually fighting demons, all right? Sister Abimbola Akanu, welcome. Welcome, Brother Andrew. Whenever you have any problem in life or a situation that is adverse to you or you are going through struggles, you are going through limitations, know the power behind Know the power behind, and the power behind are demons. Shalom, Sister Brenda and Sister Pamela, Sister Kathy Risk, Sister Emelda. As you join in, saints, endeavor to continue to like this live stream. Endeavor to also share with whomsoever the Lord is, de is, is, is giving you, you know, touching your heart to share the live stream with. And keep tapping the screen and like it. Shalom, saints. I'm going to wait for some of you more to join in so that we can start. Sister Tembi, shalom. Sister Dolores, Mrs. Erin. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Sister Sim Sima. Shalom, shalom. Iga, shalom, shalom, shalom. Sister Wanda Robinson. Shalom, sister. I'm glad to see you today. Shalom, shalom. Miss S. Shalom, Tanda Zile. Shalom, my sister. Shalom. Shalom, Sister Glow. Shalom, Sister Diana. Shalom, Sister Shahida. Shalom, Autoflex. Shalom, Sister Celine. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And thank you, sisters, for liking the live stream. I really do appreciate. Shalom, Levy alone. Shalom, Sister Natalia. Shalom, Roses. Shalom, Sister Antoinette. Shalom, 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 Simi. Shalom, Precious Saints. Shalom, shalom, as you join in. Precious saints of the Most High God, um, please do get your Bibles ready, pen and paper. You already know what we do here. We come ready, don't we? Shalom, 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 everyone joining. So we're going to consecrate this live stream unto the Lord and we're going to get straight into business. Once again, let me repeat to you the title for this live stream and the title is Demons. Demons are real. Demons are real. So I want you to understand something, saints. Whenever you are facing any difficulty in life, perhaps you are sick, perhaps you are going through a financial struggle or problems in your marriage, problems with your children, um, 
you know, difficulty in getting a job, securing a job, whatever situation you are facing in this life, you must understand that demons are always behind misfortunes, infirmities, uh, adverse situations, is always demons, all right? You, you know, we live in this modern society that we tend to think that demons don't exist. They, they, you know, even sometimes when we are in church, we don't really believe the power of demons and what demons are capable of doing. We don't understand how demons operate. And that is the main reason why many believers are unable to be victorious against the wicked darts of the enemy. Because if you don't understand your enemy and what is fighting you, how will you defend yourself? And that is why we need the word of God um, so that we can know how to understand our enemy so that we can protect ourselves, so that we can fight back, okay? Because some of you that are here listening, watching, you are not winning the Bible, in the battle. In fact, you are being conquered, you are being defeated, and you are exhausted, and you don't know how to go forward, and you are, some of you here, even planning to give up. Don't give up. The Lord is here to expose the ministry of demons, how they operate, and how you can fight and be victorious, and how you can uh, be delivered, and how your family can also be delivered through you, through your faith in Christ, and through your due diligence, all right? And again, remember the words of Jesus. Know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Nowhere in the Bible it says that you need to connect with certain man or woman of God. No, it tells you that by knowing the truth, the truth will set you free. And that is why I have a commitment with the word of God. I have a commitment with the children of God to come here every day that God gives me breath to teach you. All right, because if you are not being taught according to the word of God, how will you be delivered? You will never be delivered. You know, I wanted you to understand something. Today, church is a big business. Pastors, men of God, women of God, so-called prophets, missionaries, whatever. Most of them are not saying all of them saints. There are men and women of God out there like myself that are trying. But most of them, it's a business. They actually um, don't want you to be delivered because if you are delivered, you are not going to continue to sponsor the enterprise, the company and the business. So that's why they don't teach you the word. They don't want you to learn the word. They don't teach you because they are capitalizing on what demons are doing against you. So what they will do, they will give you anointing oil, handkerchiefs, uh, holy water, and they will charge you for those things. And they will charge you for deliverance services. They will charge you to come to your home and pray for you. And that is why I am here to say, and I don't care who is angry, church now has become a business. All right. And pastors are CEOs of those companies. It is as plain and simple as that. Because nowhere in the Bible, Jesus commissioned the, the, the believers to go and make money out of people. No, Jesus commissioned to us to go preach the gospel. And those who believe shall be saved and those who don't believe will be condemned. There is nowhere in the Bible that says that Jesus has sent people now to open business and make the church a big business. That is not it. All right? All right? Instead of them relying of God, on God for their sustenance, relying on God to guide them, they want to capitalize on people's suffering and pain and sorrow because they, 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 they want to be rich by all means necessary. All right? And that is why the church is now a mess. That is why pastors are using... Are now, you know, selling their souls and gaining power so that they can control and manipulate the church. And I want to also make you aware of a scam that is going on in the body of Christ today. Majority of the pastors and the people who are ministers of the gospel, they are actually spiritualists. They have actually acquired powers from Satan to come and bamboozle the faithful, the, 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 the believers. So when you go to these deliverance services, you're thinking that they are praying for you to be delivered. 
Suppose you go to them and you have an infirmity, you have a heart problem. What they will do, they will take that demon of infirmity off you and they will replace with a demon of poverty. That is how they perpetuate the cycle of slavery in their churches. That's why you need to be very careful whom you submit under, what men of God and women of God you submit under. You need to be very careful. As a matter of fact, I recommend you not to submit under anyone. You only submit under God. Obviously, you have respect for the people who are out there preaching the gospel. But at the end of the day, submission is to Almighty God and submission is to only Him. All right? Once you begin to substitute God, all right, with a man or a woman because you've seen them doing something, you will be always be in trouble and you will not inherit the kingdom of God because you have now become an idolater. And I'm sorry to say this idolatry is in the body of Christ today. We don't worship statues and idols, but do we do worship man of God and women of God. In fact, some of you will have more reverence for the woman of God and the man of God than you would to God and God himself. I don't want to um, extend because I will be preaching about these things, but let us consecrate saints this live stream unto the Lord. If you are here for the first time, welcome. The title for this live stream is Demons Are Real. Stick around. I'm sure God will speak to you. And um, please let us all be in the spirit of prayer before the Lord. Let us have great reverence for him because we are going to invite his presence to be here with us. Hallelujah, saints. Glory be to God. I hope you are all doing well. And I pray that the presence of the living God is in your hearts. Hallelujah. Abba Father, King of glory, everlasting God, we thank you, Father Lord, for allowing us to see another day, another week starting, Lord God. Father Lord, we are fast approaching the month of September. And we realize, some of us, that this month of August has been supernaturally been so um, fast and quick, Father Lord, that it's, it's like a dream that we are about to step into the month of September. Father Lord, we thank you for keeping us thus far. For Father Lord, for keeping the fire burning in our prayer altars, Father Lord, for keeping us together. Father Lord, thank you for feeding us, healing us, restoring us, delivering us and our family members from the hands of the wicked one. Thank you for providing for us in, in ways, Father Lord, we didn't even pray for. Thank you for allowing us, Father Lord, to break generational curses, to break barriers, Lord God, and to have the victory. Thank you, Father Lord, for the knowledge that comes from the word, Lord God, that we receive every day in our hearts, every time we meditate on, on, on it, Lord God. Thank you for because you have never abandoned us, Lord. Thank you, Father Lord, for giving us hope even when we can't believe in ourselves anymore. Thank you for strengthening us and our family members. Thank you also for, for keeping us safe from harm, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because although we, many of us, we are going through trials and tribulations and difficult situations, Father Lord, we have hope in our hearts and we have been seeing the moving of your hands, Lord God, mightily upon your, our lives. And we know that this too shall pass and victory, Father Lord, is certain, is guaranteed for us, your children. Almighty God, King of glory, everlasting Father, as we gather here together as your servants, Lord God, we are asking you, Father Lord, that you forgive us our sins and transgressions and iniquities up to a thousand generations before us, Lord God, even back to Adam and Eve, Father Lord, and forgive us from all our, all our unrighteousness and sins, Father Lord. Have mercy and allow the blood of your Son, Jesus, to fully cleanse us and wash us and sanctify us and purify us from all sin. Father Lord, I immerse this live stream in the precious blood of your Son, Jesus. I envelope each one of us present here, including our children and family members, in the precious blood of your Son, Jesus. I saturate and drench our environment with the precious blood of your Son, Jesus. And I'm asking you today, Father Lord, that you will be in control and in authority and sovereignty over the live streams, the live stream and the affairs of the live stream. I'm asking you, Father Lord, Begin to summon from the four corners of these street, uh, these um, TikTok streets, 
all those father lord whom you want to reveal yourself to them so that they too can be delivered today so that salvation can take place lord god and repentance almighty god king of glory everlasting father i am asking you today manifest your power on this live stream father lord release the anointing that breaks the yoke so that every yoke upon the necks of thy servants will be broken will be destroyed Remember us today, Father Lord, and find expression in our midst. Begin to possess our hearts, our souls, our spirits, and our bodies. Incarnate yourself in us, Lord God, so that your will will always be established in our lives. And as we gather here, Lord God, give us therefore divine revelation so that when we hear your word lord god and we submit under your word lord god we can then have divine revelation of how to pray concerning our, the many battles that we are facing today so that we will have the victory lord god and be fully delivered father lord i pray renew the hope of the hopeless on this live stream those that are thinking of giving up and not praying anymore and not fasting and not seeking your face again father lord i'm asking you renew their strength today Help them, Father Lord, <clears throat> to stay steady fast, stay put, and put on the full armor as it is written in the book of Ephesians, Lord God. And Father Lord, I'm asking you today, Lord God, begin to bind the demons and evil spirits, Lord God, that are monitoring this life stream for evil, that are seeking to steal, kill, and destroy, and frustrate our gathering here and the affairs of this live stream. Bind them, Father Lord, with everlasting chains of the Holy Ghost fire, and cast them all onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever, never to exercise control, dominion, oppression, and authority over us and the live stream and the affairs of this live stream. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, Arise from your holy throne of judgment. And Father Lord, let your judgment be released, Father Lord, on witches and wizards and warlocks present on this live stream. Some of them to monitor us for evil as well. Father Lord, I'm asking you that you will judge them, you will arrest them, and you will render them powerless in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father Lord, I'm asking you today, as I decrease, increase in me, use me, Father Lord, as a holy vessel, Father Lord, to communicate to thy servants, so that whatever word you have given me today, Lord God, will not return void to you, but will accomplish that that has been released to accomplish, Lord God. And Father Lord, I thank you for all that you have done in the past in our lives, for all that you are doing, and also for all that you are about to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Precious saints, I trust you are all doing well by the grace of God that you are in good health and also all your family members. Let us go, saints, to the book of Luke chapter 8 from verse 26 to 32. Um, Gospel of Luke chapter 8 from verse 26 to 32. Jesus heals a man controlled by demons. Jesus heals a man controlled by demons. Jesus and his disciples sailed to, a, to an area of the Gerasenes across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped on shore, he was met by a man from the town. The man was controlled by demons. For a long time, he had not worn clothes or lived in a house. He lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet. He shouted at the top of his voice, Jesus, son of the most high God, what do you want with me? I beg you, don't hurt me. This was because Jesus had commanded the evil spirit to come out of the man. Many times the spirit had taken hold of him. The man's hands and feet were chained and he was kept under God, but he had broken his chains, and then the demon had forced him to go out into lonely places in the countryside. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him, and they begged Jesus again and again not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, 
the demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs and he allowed it. Precious saints, um, we have an account here of Jesus and his disciples sailing to an area across the Lake Galilee. Um, I'm sure Jesus was always led by the Holy Spirit. I know that for a fact. And I know that there was a divine appointment. That that man that was suffering, all right, because he was being controlled by demons. And God, Jesus wanted him to be delivered. And Jesus wanted to show something to people. That when you see a person suffering any sort of oppression, there are demons controlling that person so that that person can still be oppressed over and over again daily. You know, we live in a modern world, right? Or what we say, this, this, this um, Western world. And one thing that describes the Western world is that the Western world believes in the power of science and anything that cannot be explained by science is refuted, is rejected, and is seen as something not to be entertained because it proves that um, if it cannot be proven by science, that then it's fairy tales, is whatever it is, and that is the system. That Satan designed here in the Western world to continue to keep people oppressed and possessed by demons. All right. Um, you will see that, for instance, the, the medical field um, of psychiatry has a, a scientific name for each type of possession and demonic possession has a name. You know, the Bible does not lie. All right. The Bible tells us that that man was controlled by demons. I want you to pay attention to the word controlled by demons. Demons were controlling that man. It was the demons that were making him violent. It was the demons that were making him cut himself, injure himself, go to the desert places and to the countryside and in places where no one lived to do God knows what else, to go to tombs and act that way. The Bible is very clear here that that man only did the things that he was doing because he was controlled by demons. He was only dangerous and was doing all the things that he was doing because evil spirits, demons, were controlling that man. But today, the field of psychiatry will not allow you to make such statements. All right? For instance, if a person hears voices, which are demons, but they, that way, if a person is violent and he has, a, is, he feels like no one can control them, they are then admitted into a psychiatry, psychiatry unit, and they are given uh, um, medicine, they are given psychotropical medicines and different things to keep them under control. And we have accepted that demonic possession is an infirmity, and we don't understand that demonic possession is something that takes place in the spirit realm and i want you to understand this if you have a child that that child has seizures that is a demonic possession in fact when you have a child and they begin begin to have seizures know that the demons are trying to enter that child and you have to take action very quickly Sometimes um, children that they have developed later on um, certain infirmities, certain diseases, um, such as severe autism, such as bipolar, ADHD, these are only names given to demons to um, make the parents accept the demonic possession. It is as simple as that. Because once you accept the diagnosis from the doctor, you are actually accepting, you are entering into an agreement with that spirit that yes, they can occupy your child's, uh, uh, use your child as a vessel and you are okay with it and you will comply with the system of this world, which is a system that uh, based on science has created certain medications to suppress the demon. But the demon will always be there and your child or that young person will always be dependent on those medications. So number one, you must act, we as believers, we must understand that life is spiritual. 
Here where am I seated in this moment? There are many demons around me seeking to devour me, seeking to do whatever it is that they want to do. And the same is for you. Wherever you are right now, know that there are demons watching you carefully. And seeking for an opportunity to possess you, to strike you, to do whatever it is that Satan wants to do against you. All right? So I want you to understand something, saints. Stop looking at life as just what you can see with your, you, with your carnal eyes, with your physical eyes. Life is much more than that. Life is spiritual. And this world that we live in is governed by demons. Oh, but Sister Dalila, you are being too negative. You are talking in a negative manner. No, I'm not talking in a negative manner. I'm giving you facts. Jesus Christ of Nazareth said that this, the God of this world is who? Is Satan, right? If the God of this world is Satan, saints, that means that Satan has a system in place to keep the human beings that live on this world oppressed. Am I right or not? So much so that we can see that Jesus here, he um, was led to go to this place to deliver that man that was oppressed. That man lived in tombs. That man, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet. The demons inside of that man recognized the power, the authority, and the anointing and, and, and the divinity of Jesus. And because demons tremble at the presence of the name of Jesus and at the mention of the name of Jesus, demons had to manifest. And, and every time you will see that there is the anointing, demons will manifest. That's why, for instance, when you go to work in the morning, you have prayed and you are fasting you go to as soon as you enter into your office your boss your ceo begins begins to manifest your co-workers begin to manifest because why whenever there is a the presence of the living god demons are not comfortable with the anointing they're not comfortable with the presence of god all right some of you that you live with a certain family member that is not yet saved and born again. And because they are possessed by a certain entity, there is always conflict in the home. There is also problems. And this includes even children. Some of you, the minute you come home, your children are manifesting, manifesting left, right and center. And you begin to feel, but what is wrong with these children? Why all of a sudden these children are being, and you don't understand that they are manifesting demons, evil spirits. And the Bible tells us that he began to shout. When you begin to feel that there is also always confrontation at home, confrontation at your workplace, unnecessary confrontation, and you don't understand, now get the revelation. Demons must manifest when the presence of the living God is in a certain place. It is a given. Demons will always manifest. Because demons are only comfort comfortable with other demons that's why everybody in your at your workplace gets on fine but the minute you arrive they all gang up against you because why you are making the demons there uncomfortable the anointing is burning them so every time the anointing begins to burn in a certain environment demons have to vocalize that they are there to let you know that they are there And that's why sometimes when people act up, you shouldn't react. Go to the nearest toilet, the nearest bathroom and cast them out. You are wiser now. You know the scripture. You know the word of God. Stop acting like people have something personal against you. Be more spiritual. I begin to assess things from a spiritual point of, of view and not from the carnal point of view. You are there upset up in your feelings. That is how demons react. They want to react in the flesh because once you begin to take things into a spiritual context, you will cast them out. So they have to play with your emotions and your feelings. And you don't understand that life in the spirit is not driven by emotions and feelings. It is driven by authority, by you in the name of Jesus Christ. Casting out whatever demons are manifesting in anyone. Let us go to verse 29. No, sorry. Let us continue from verse 28. When he, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet. He shouted at the top of his voice, Jesus, son of the most high God, what do you want with me? I beg you, don't hurt me. 
This was because Jesus had commanded the evil spirit to come out of the man. Many times the spirit had taken hold of him. The man's hands and feet were chained and he was kept under God. When people go to mental homes, is it not what they do to them? The most, the, the ones that are very dangerous and, and, and aggressive. Is it not what they do? They, they put them on a restraining jacket. All right. They, they will bind the feet and also chain the feet and chain the hands so that they will not attack the nurses there and, and the staff and also the doctors. And the Bible says, and he was kept under guard. They will have heavy security guarding that mental institution day and night. Strong men and, and men that can t always take control physically of the patient. Am I right? And so that certain medication can be administered to them, injections to calm them down. All right. And isn't that what happens, saints? I'm leading you on your journey so that you will understand. But he had broken his chains and then the demon had forced him to go into lonely places in the countryside. The reason why these medical patients are restrained in such a manner is because they can uh, go to places and hurt people, right? And in poorer countries, you will see mad people, they roam the streets because they don't, the, 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 in, in poor countries, like for instance, in Africa, in the African continent, the government does not have the money to actually um, um, keep up with the hospitals and the, the mad people will just roam around the streets and everything. And every now and again, the government will send uh, units to, to, to restrain them and to take them away so that they can be, you know, injected and kept under control and care of the government. But because the governments there are underfunded and poor and because of the corruption system, there are many mad people roaming around the streets and some of them are dangerous. Some of them even end up unaliving people on the streets. This is the reality in the African continent. All right. This is the reality. But I want you to pay attention to verse 30. Whenever a demon is manifesting and you, as you cast out that demon, you must ask the name of that demon. That is what Jesus did. Jesus said, Jesus asked him, what is your name? Look at the response. Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. I want to say something to you, saints. There is a demonic possession that is very common among the rainbow people, the alphabet people. They have many names to call themselves. He, she, he, hers, this, this, and that, and this. They always say that they are many. So that is telling you that they are possessed. These people, these particular people are, are, are possessed by legion. There is more than one demon oppressing that person. It's never one. It's more than one demon because they wouldn't have so many pronouns to identify themselves if it was just one demon. The reason why they want to be identified by many pronouns is because they are acknowledging that they are possessed and there are many demons that have taken over their bodies. They don't have one, but they have a legion, right? And I want you to understand this. Very important. Okay? Very important. That's why today they feel like being this and tomorrow like being that. Too. And, 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 and it is like there are many entities that are using them. In fact, it is, it is a legion. When you are dealing with such people, know that you are dealing with a legion. And legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged Jesus again and again. Not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs. And he allowed it. Be, you know why they asked Jesus to go into the pigs? Because these demons were filthy demons. They needed vessels. And But Jesus... Because he's God, he allowed the pigs to go into the sea and to be drowned because these demons were marine spirits as well. And they needed a vessel to go back into the sea. These were not demons that could go into the abyss. These were marine spirits. And let me give you divine revelation about the 
alphabet people and the rainbow people. Those demons and legions that they have are marine spirits, are spirits of the sea. That is why the women become men and men become women. The, 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 there is a certain extravagance in the men. They are like mermaids. They have the mermaid spirit in them. You will notice that everybody is extra, 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 extraordinary. They need to have the best wigs. The makeup has to be this. Even a woman will not adorn herself with so much excess like how they do it because these are marine spirits. That's why they didn't want to go to a beast. They were more comfortable going into the sea. All right, saints. So I want you to understand that number one, demonic possession is very real. Stop thinking that that a child that is giving you trouble is just being rebellious, is just not listening. Know that there is a demon sponsoring the rebellion. If a person has a problem with addiction, know that there are demons behind the addiction and sponsoring the addiction. If you are going through poverty, you can never get a job. You can never succeed in life. You, you are stuck financially. You are stuck in terms of career. You can't even get a job. Know that you are dealing with a demon of poverty and joblessness. There is a demonic force behind your predicament and that is who you need to fight. You need to stop fighting people in, in your family, fighting your boss, fighting whatever it is. You need to address and command that demonic force. To, you need to cast it out from your finances. You need to tell Satan to leave you and whatever it is that he is using to oppress you, you need to cast Satan out of your life, out of your health. If you are sick, out your finances, if you are facing financial difficulties, whatever situation it may be. And I want you to understand something, saints. Demons do not possess people just because. All right? Many children that are going through predicaments, whether infirmities, whether, um, whether for instance, bipolar, autism, all these different things that people go through now, especially children, ADHD, know that there is an open door. Satan has used an open door, a legal right, to possess that child, to possess that young person. I want you to understand this very clearly. Legal rights, all right, can be either from, your, from the mother's side or the father's side. Suppose, for instance, that you had a child and you don't know what is. That's why it's important before you have a child with a person that you investigate well and good what is the background of that person. Um, if you are marrying into a family that is heavily involved into witchcraft, know that there are many legal rights open in that family for demons to possess that child, even when that child is in the womb, even at the moment of conception. I'm not joking here. That's why you see children born with, with um, all sorts of deformities, all sorts. And you think, but this child, well, how, what has happened? It is because you have procreated with somebody that in their family, they have open doors to Satan. They have legal rights. They have agreements with Satan and they have not broken those agreements. In fact, it could be a family that is still practicing witchcraft, that is still practicing the your cult that is still out there serving the devil. That is why you should never just rush to get married. You need to get married to a person that number one is born again, serious with Christ and a person who has done the work of breaking generational curses. Because if you are procreating with a person that has not dealt with the generational curses in their family, has not closed those doors, has not uh, uh, broken the legal agreements with Satan, you are going to give birth to children that are going to give you problems, that are going to give you uh, uh, resistance in life. They're going to rebel. They're going to go into substance abuse. They're going to go into crime. They're going to go into the, 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 the anti-clockwise lifestyle and all these different things. These are not just coincidence saints. There are demons behind this, but we children of God, we human beings, we open the doors. We open the doors. There are many of you here today that you are fighting you are fighting uh, a certain predicament in your life, a certain pattern because your family 
or from your mother's side or your father's side was heavily involved into the occult. I want to tell you something, for instance. If you come from a family background that is heavily involved in witchcraft or in your cult, there are patterns that indicate involvement in such occultic activities in witchcraft. Number one, families heavily involved in the occult, they always have a demon of poverty oppressing them. They always have a demon of infirmity oppressing them as well. Some of them cannot, you will notice that cannot, they cannot get married. Um, they're very promiscuous. They're volatile. They suffer from depression. They suffer from bipolar, this, this and that, addictions. All these different demons come because somebody in your family opened the door to the occult. For instance, how many of you here used to play with the Ouija boards or go to tarot readings and all these different things? What you don't understand is that by participating in these occultic activities, you open a door. You actually told the devil to, look, you, I'm giving you free access. That is what you said. When a person goes and seeks solution in the occult for whatever problems they have, they are actually giving Satan a passport. A legal right to to not only control their lives but to control the next generations to come that is that is why god takes it very seriously witchcraft if you go to the old testament he says that thou shall not suffer a witch to live right because god takes that very serious because God understands that by that person continuing practicing the occult, many, many people are going to suffer. Not only the direct children, but the grandchildren, great grandchildren will be suffering and even the community because a person becomes a portal for Satan, a portal for demons, becomes a channeler for all the evil forces to come and oppress that family and even oppress the community. And you will notice people who practice sorcery and witchcraft, it's something that is from where they are from. In their communities, they all practice Practicing the same in their communities they all have the same gods they only they all have the same system of of of, the, of occultic beliefs and then if you notice for instance places where witchcraft is heavily practiced are plagued with poverty and infirmity and disease let me give you an example the african continent for instance the poorer the country, you will know that these people are highly involved in the in, in witchcraft and in the occult. There is a great activity of the occult and that is why poverty and sickness and infirmity. And you look at the land and you say, but hold on a minute. All the resources that are needed in the world are extracted here. But why is it that the people living here are so heavily oppressed, can never be in charge, can never better themselves? Because why? Uh, they the, the, the generations upon generations have invited demons by this belief system. The belief system is a belief system that continuously invites demons, not only to oppress the nation, but also to oppress the, the communities and the citizens of that nation. And I'm going to give you another example. For, in, for instance, Haiti. Haiti. Haiti has been a country that was founded with voodoo. Um, that, that independence that they managed to gain from France, apparently they used a lot of voodoo in order to defeat the French army. The French army would go there, try to fight, and they would become invisible. They would hide they, they, in the spirit. They would use a lot of voodoo in order to be able to, 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 to gain the independence. And because the country was founded in witchcraft, was founded in voodoo, Haiti never prospers. All diseases, name it, they are there. All infirmities, name it, they are there. Earthquakes, <laughs> it's constant. In fact, let me tell you something. Do you know that Haiti is the, cap the, Haiti is the country of witchcraft initiation? Any, any Satanist, any person that is involved in the dark arts, they cannot be fully initiated unless they go to Haiti and uh, go through the process of initiation there. Because that is the headquarters 
of Satanism and witchcraft. It is in Haiti. And it's a system that is, 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 is a national system. It's embedded in people's lives. Only God to have mercy. Voodoo, yes. In fact, voodoo is the religion of Benin. It's true, Sister Chichi. And the slaves from Benin are the ones that were taken to Haiti. And in Haiti, they continue to practice voodoo. And how were they able to hide it? Because voodoo hides behind the saints, the Catholic saints. So in order to, for them to continue that system of voodoo, they baptized each statue of, for, for instance, uh, St. Joseph. And, and they gave the names of the African gods so that they could continue to practice voodoo in Haiti as you see the system of slavery. They were taken into slavery because that is an indication that that you 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 have you, you God is punishing you for your witchcraft, and they didn't even care that they were punished. They still continue. They can't even see it that hey, I'm in slavery and the Lord is punishing me for what I'm doing. I don't know if you. I am a person that investigates a lot of this so that I can teach you. But there was a lady in the United States of America, an African-American lady, that decided to go to witchcraft on a voodoo retreat. And the plan was that she wanted to be initiated as a, 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 a mamba, a mambo, a mambo priestess. And she, she, she got herself ready and went on her flight to go to this um, witchcraft, voodoo retreat so that she could be initiated. And she arrived safe. She texted her son that she was all right. But on the next day, there was no communication. Because why? Either she didn't pass the, 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 the initiation rites. Because there are certain sects of voodoo, of witchcraft, that you can only enter when you come from such a family that has those demons. So if you are wanted to be initiated in, 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 into the, 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 the goddess, the, the, the system of the goddess of the river, you need to come from a family that has that is covenanted to the, the, to the, to the mermaid spirits or to the marine kingdom. Or else, if you try to get initiated in that practice, you will die. Simple as that. Okay? So if you are a person that you are a herbalist, you need to be initiated into, into the, the, the earth, the things of the earth. They either bury you or anything like that so that you can be initiated in that sect. It's like when you go to, to, to college, all right? Either you are gifted to be a doctor or either you are gifted to be a, 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 a economist, a sociologist, whatever it is, or a nurse, whatever gift you have, is what you will go and specialize in, in, in college, right? Same thing with this system of witchcraft. Okay? So, for her to become a, mam a mambo, right? She needed to have been come from a bloodline of mambos, which she didn't. She was curious and she thought that she can go there and play Mickey Mouse with those people. And I believe either she didn't pass the initiation, the rites that were, are terrible, the kind of things that they do and make people pass through just to initiate them. It's not a joke. You need to be uh, uh, the person needs to be um, possessed by many legions to be able just alone to endure the process of, of initiation. Or she went there and because she didn't have what it takes, she was used as a sacrifice. Or when she went to the sea to be initiated on the sea, she was taken by the, 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 the fallen angels in the sea that are the mermaids, right? So, all these different things, saints, can happen. Because the, the, the world of Satan, the world of witchcraft is the world of Satan. It's not fair, it's not just, and it's, it has no mercy. And it's a system of slavery. In witchcraft, in voodoo, in, in, in the occult, is he that has more power that will control the rest of the witches. That is why. When you go and consult a witch or you go and consult a herbalist or you go and consult any sorcerer because you have a problem, right? 
if the witches in your family are stronger than the one that you have gone to consult, they will threaten that witch and tell that, look, release our slave. Don't even get involved with our business. And their allegiance, the witch's allegiance, is among themselves and Satan is not you that's gone there to pay money. That's why a lot of people are unalived. A lot of people perish. And I want to say to you, these saints, those of you that come from that ancestral worship um, tradition, especially you, the Africans, and your parents are telling you and threatening you if you leave the ancestors and if you leave these gods, if you leave this is going to happen to you, that is going to happen to you. It's a lie. What have, have they gained in following Satan? Some of them, the, 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 these Sangomas and these Mambas and all these different people, these witches and wizards and warlocks, are people who are very sick, oppressed by Satan because Satan is a cruel master. He doesn't give peace to anyone. He will give them powers here and there, but he will keep them also oppressed. If Juju and Voodoo and Hutu and all these different things is good, why is it that all African countries are in poverty, heavy corruption, uh, uh, infirmities, and, and poverty that has no end, including Haiti? And, and not only that, all third world countries for that matter, including South American countries. I'm talking about Brazil, Peru, uh, Bolivia. I'm talking about Mexico. I'm talking about the, 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 the Dominican Republic. I'm talking about all of those um, um, countries that practice heavy witchcraft and Santeria and whatever it is. And why is it that every time you see black people or their descendants, there is always poverty? I'm asking you. If you notice, for instance, here in the Western world, when they give a market to black people to run, it will be filthy and dirty and run down. Only, only, only you will feel comfortable in that mess. I know many markets here that uh, they call them Afro-Caribbean markets. They are the most dirty markets you could ever see. Uh, dirty, they're filthy, and, and, and you, you don't even feel like going there, but because they sell cassava and yams, and they sell produce from the Caribbean or Africa, we go. But it's, it's a place that is a mess. Why do you think that is? Because demons run these people. They are, they, they, everything that they do, they need to have juju. Everything they need to do, they, they need juju. They need to be fortified. They need to have something, something. They need to have calabash. They need to have this and that. And they, they, they are willing to do anything for Satan just to give them something, something. And I want to say to you that this system is all powered by demons. Okay? And you will notice that some of these people that are... That, that is why it's very important that you find out who... You are going to procreate with. Suppose you go and marry into a family of, of voodoo. A, mar a family of witchcraft. A family heavily involved in the, into tarot card reading. Into astrology. A family heavily involved in santeria and brujeria. A family very, very involved. Let me tell you this. Into these associations. A family that, that everybody is a sorrow. Everybody is a brotherhood. If you if you marry into that that let me tell you something. Whenever you marry into a family, you are either marrying the demons that are in that family or the Holy Ghost. There is no in between. Whenever you are marrying into a family, or you are you are procreating with somebody that you are is from a certain family. You are marrying the demons. You are married the demonic system and you're going to get the, 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 you're going to have to reap whatever it is because you enter into a covenant with the demons. And, and some of you need to start to listen. You want to know what demons are in a certain family? Study that family. How well is the, if you are interested on a gentleman, it doesn't matter how much he tells you that he's a born again, how he loves God and this and that. Look at the family. How is the relationship between parents? 
Is the mother also born again or is the mother jumping from one witch to another? Is a mother is the mother involved in the occult? Is a mother into witchcraft? Is the family in poverty? If you look at the children that come from that family, are they disabled? They all they have a disability, they have a certain the all of them are disabled and sick and they have a certain skin condition. You have to investigate. Stop jumping into marriage because you are getting old or you're too desperate. You will marry demons. And then the children that you're going to have are going to be possessed by those demons and you're going to be suffering to deliver your children, to deliver yourself from the covenant you've made. I want to give you an example. For, ex for instance, if you marry a person that is Hindu, you are married into the God, God of monkey, God of rat, God of cow. You are marrying all those Hindu gods when you marry them. Simple as that. So when you have a child, your child belongs to all those pantheon of gods. Can you imagine the fight? You marry a family that is in Santeria. You are marrying the goddess, Ochu. You are marrying the, the, the Orishas. You are marrying all those different things. That is who you're marrying. You, you're looking at a person, but you are marrying the system of belief that you have, that you are... Um, that you have just just married that person you are marrying this the belief system of that person you are marrying the gods you are wearing marrying the demons so marriage is something serious that's why that's why the bible says listen israelites you can only marry israelites don't marry idolaters because if you marry the idolater, you will marry his idols. You will marry her idols as well. Therefore, you are going to have to service those altars yourself. Because you married into it. And in the New Testament, it says, don't be unequally yoked. In other words, you cannot, you can love a person till thy kingdom come. If they are not born again, washed in the blood. If they have not given their lives to Christ and they have not broken the generational curse in their lives, they are not fit for to marry you. Might as well stay there put, even if you get married at 42, at least you will marry a man of God and a woman of God. And you won't have to fight a child that is drooling from one month, a child that is crippled, a child that cannot speak or marry into constant patterns of poverty and infirmity. You that never used to be sick, you are now sick. You that you never used to tr struggle to get jobs, now you are struggling to get jobs. You that you never used to struggle with, with be able to, to, to pay your now you are struggling with things that you never struggled with because why you married the demons that that person was already covenanted to and because they're not they, they didn't deal with the deliverance process they were not delivered themselves they now they, you 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 are fighting what they are fighting and you are under the the demonic oppression that they are under it is the truth because the bible does not lie the Bible tells us here, verse 27, when Jesus stepped on shore, he was met by a man from the town. The man was controlled by demons. There is only two things that can happen. Either you are controlled by demons or you are controlled by the Holy Ghost and controlled by God. And it's important even when you make friends. Are your friends controlled by demons or are your friends controlled by the Holy Ghost? Come on now, saints. Some of you don't want to hear the truth, but you're going to hear the truth today. Demons are real. And they have power. And we, the people, give them power because we won't commit to God. We won't repent. If you, for instance, begin to drink as a teenager, you are opening yourself up to be possessed by demons of addiction. That's why you started with a glass and now you can drink a whole full bottle without any problem. And you don't even feel that that is bad. Because why? First entered the first demon of addiction and then he kept calling more and more and more. Now you are addicted. You cannot go a week, two weeks, three, three weeks without a, a glass, without a bottle, without whatever it is. You see? 
The day you decided to engage in acts of fornication, you lost your virginity, you would sensual activities with uh, uh, outside of marriage, a spirit of perversion enter you. Now you are sleeping left, right, and center with everyone. Neither you see that as wrong because even society applauds you and tells you that yes, as long as you wear a rubber thing, that is fine and carry on with your life. But you don't understand that that day you open a portal for spirits of, of perversion to enter you to possess you and now you are being jumping from one man to another from one woman to another you see how it starts the first day you stole something from someone that demon of theft enter you now you can go into shops and steal you can lie you can deceive you can take things from people very easily and you don't feel like you're doing something wrong because why once one demon enters, that's it. Pa he, that demon is not going to be satisfied with being there alone. He has to call others, other demons to come and possess. Simple as that. The first time you went to consult a witch or a wizard or tarot card or astrology and everything, you opened the door for any demon to come and enter you. And sometimes it could be the demon of perversion. It could be whatever altar you consulted. The demons that control that altar are the demons that will possess you. And then those demons will call other demons. And then those demons that they never had access to you, but because you opened the door that belonged to your family or to your community, they will also enter you. Now you are a demoniac, full-blown. And you need deliverance. Oh, but Sister Dalila, you are going too far now. I'm not going too far. You men that like to go around with mistresses, you're married, but you were in adultery. You are opening the door for the demon of disrespect, the demon of perversion to enter into your family, the demon of dishonor to enter your family. Many men are going to come and sleep with your daughters and not marry them because you open the door by committing adultery and your daughters will be always go, always going after married men and you will, not, you, will, you will not understand now that they are adults and they cannot find one young single man to marry them because why? You, the father, you, the mother, you decided to enter into adultery. You decided that, hey, you're going to commit adultery. You're going to go to the motel. And Satan was waiting for you to do that so that you could have access to your daughters, so that your daughters will not marry. Therefore, they won't fulfill purpose so that your daughters now will begin to commit a crotion, one a crotion after another a crotion because why? What happens is that when people engage into a life of immorality, they also unalive and commit a crotion in their wombs. They terminate the pregnancy. And because they don't know who the father of the, the baby is, they don't even feel anything. Uh, um, they don't feel like they're doing something wrong because why? It's in the bloodline. All right. They don't feel like it because the demons are controlling them. When, you are, when a person is controlled by demons, they cannot see it. Only one that has the spirit of the living God can see that, hey, this person is controlled by demons. And when you first commit your first accrochion, your first termination, you will notice that the second, the third, the fourth, you will do it and you don't feel, you won't feel like it. And what you don't understand is that you always want to uh, uh, terminate because the demons of perversion that are inside of you need to be fed blood. Demons of perversion are drinkers of demons, drink, like to drink blood and eat flesh. So you are providing them a sacrifice. And the more you do it, the more perverted you continue to be. To be. Because you are controlled by demons. The spirit of the living God does not control you. Demons control you. Let us go to Matthew chapter 12 from verse 43 to 45. I hope you are taking notes, saints. All right. Matthew chapter 12 from verse 43 to 45. Matthew 12 verse 43 to 45 reads, When an impure spirit comes out of a person... It goes through arid places, seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. This is a message for you, the backsliders. 
deliverance champion number one. There is no deliverance service that you have not attended. As a matter of fact, you are always jumping from one, one deliverance service to another. Every day you are being delivered, delivered, delivered. And here goes the past and casts out the demon and everything. Then you go back to your fornication. Then you go back to your adultery. Then you go back to your lying and cheating and deceiving and anti-clockwise lifestyle. You go back to them clubs. You go back to that your crusty, crusty boyfriend and girlfriend. And you are committing all sorts of immorality, all sorts of idolatry again. And, and you don't understand that you cannot just bounce back. You are playing with demons and demons will not play with you. Because what, what happens? The Bible says that when the pastor was casting out the demons and delivering you in the name of Jesus, you became clean with the blood of Jesus. But then when you bounce back into your sin, when you bounce back to your weakness, when you bounce back and sneak in into your corn website, when you went about and began to, to consult your zodiac again, those demons that were in you will come back and say, hey, hey, our vessel is now ready for us because our vessel has backslidden. So they will go and get seven more demons worse than them to come and possess you again all right so the devil will go and get more the demons will go and recruit other species worse than them to possess your body and to use you now you you that were in fornication but it wasn't that bad it was every now and again that you were sneaking in now you are moving in with your girl you are now moving in you are now uh, sponsoring your sugar babe you are now sending her money and you are now don't have one sugar babe you are now have seven six sugar babe in town that is you because why the the, the seven more spirits and more wicked than the, the first one that was in, uh, inhabiting you is now in you possessing you and full-born possession has taken place and now you don't understand why you 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 don't have control over your faculties you can't control your 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 your, your private areas it's like you're on fire every day and you must have three four five six seven eight girlfriends and boyfriends and you must jump from one club to another now the you that used to only go to watch the strip club uh, the, 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 whatever you are now becoming a stripper yourself you are now applying for that position that is what these seven more demons and wicked demons do they deviate you you become worse so you that are thinking of backsliding you that are thinking of going back to your vomit be very careful you might not return to come back and repent again because those the, 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 the demons are on an assignment Satan has given demons assignment to collect souls to hell. Satan does not, in his demons, don't want to perish in hell alone. They want to be heavily escorted by human beings. They want many souls to join them. And you are being recruited. You are being taken captive. It's time to start fasting and praying. Because when, uh, you know, what happens to believers? When you don't become vigilant concerning the affairs of your salvation. You become uh, prone to be tempted by Satan because say, Satan will come and tempt you, the believer. You that you have given um, your life to Christ. You that you stopped the drinking, the, the, whatever it is that you were doing when you were in the world. is you that Satan wants to come and tempt because he knows once you give in to that text message, once you take yourself to that motel, once you begin to uh, entertain certain things that you shouldn't, once you begin to download a certain website, once you begin to speak to certain people, then you can get seven more demons to possess you. Then you, you are struggling to go to church. Now you, are, you, you people are listening to gospel music and you be, begin to feel irritated and annoyed. Because why? Seven more demons are now in charge of you. And, and you, the things of God are tormenting you. When they call you from church, oh, where, where have you been? It's been three months you have not come for church. I'm too busy working. Because why? The seven more demons are controlling your mind. Are making you feel peppery. Hey, I need to go to the club. Hey, I need to drink another one because the seven more demons are now taking over. 
Now your pastor cannot say anything to you. You are telling lies to your pastor. Now your brothers and sisters that are texting you with gospel tracks and, and, and sending you a little song of worship. Hey, you, you want to block them because why? Seven more demons are controlling you and they don't want that kind of worship in the house. They don't, they, 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 they don't want you to entertain anything that is godly, anything that is holy. And I want to teach you something. You know how the devil starts? When you begin to feel that you are struggling to pray, you that used to be on fire midnight, hey, 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 God, visit me. And now that fire is quenched and is gone. Be careful. That demon, that demon that you conquered in 1996 when you gave your life to Christ is, is monitoring you. And he's making sure that your spiritual life is dull. Because it's when your spiritual life is dull. is when you don't have the fire of the Holy Ghost in your altar. Then you will begin to start look at certain people. You will begin to start downloading certain things in your phone. You will begin to start entertaining whatever. Because when you are not entertained with the things of God. You will entertain with Satan. Period. Simple as that. Watch your eye gates. Watch your air gates. What happened to David? Didn't we study the other day? He was there either. Was supposed to be at war fighting with, uh, with the other soldiers, but he was in the, at the rooftop of his palace doing nothing. And because he was idle, he saw a certain naked lady that was very beautiful. Perhaps she was not even more beautiful than the uh, concubines and everything that he had. But because when you are idle, no, uh, uh, even that, 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 that girl that has one eye against the government, that guy that is toothless will be attractive to you. Why? Because you are idle. You're not busy with the affairs of the Lord. When you're not busy with the affairs of the Lord, that is what happens. Begin to see things where they don't, don't exist. You see, begin to see that your co-worker, that, that, that his eyes are like one is facing left and another one is facing right. As you see him as a, as a heartthrob more than your husband. Because why? The devil is tempting you. Because you are idle. Now you go home, you are texting. Now you are sitting next to. Now you are going to the canteen at the same time. Satan is at work. He's prowling around like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. Don't make it easy for him though. Be vigilant. Be steady fast. The devil will even make a whore, somebody that has horse teeth out, all out, attractive to you in that season. Now you are having fantasies because why? You stop reading your Bible. The minute you stop reading your Bible, you began to have fantasies with a person that your husband and your wife can't even. They are the finest of the finest. Because the devil is not happy that you have a good looking wife. And the devil is not certainly happy that you have a good looking husband. The devil knows who is who you know. And he wants you to fall for the worst. Oh yes. You will even ignore the body order. You will even ignore everything. Because Satan has a strategy. And he will always want to downgrade your level downgrade you so that when you begin to introduce them to the to to your friends their friends he so and so they're a nice wife beautiful i wonder what happened to her now your friends want to tag along want to text your wife because you left a good steak and you left it for a, a bone of 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 kentucky fried chicken is you now your friends are now picking interest now that your friend that has been eyeing your wife, that your friend that has been eyeing your husband, because now you have gone now for, 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 for somebody that, hey, only God to have mercy. They are now making advances. And one day you will see on Facebook that your wife is now married to one of your friends at work or whatever, because he enlisted himself because you are stupid and foolish. This is how the devil does. The devil will always want to downgrade you. Be very careful. Be vigilant, saints. If he's calling you at night, why? 
all of a sudden you're now too cute for night phone calls tell the person straight away listen i don't appreciate the abuse i'm married and i don't want this sort of message at midnight and 3 a.m this is inappropriate and you tell your spouse so and so is calling me at this night i've already reprimanded them get your wife or your husband to call them as well we don't appreciate this sort of behavior of calling 3 a.m. in the morning. This is a married couple in this house. We don't appreciate the abuse. You see how the person is not going to call again. You have defeated Satan and you have defeated demons. You will notice that some, someone is all of a sudden is texting you more often. You tell them straight, I don't appreciate this, you know, you are texting me, I'm married. You are texting me too many times. We have had a conversation at work about the issue. It doesn't need to extend to after working hours. I don't appreciate it. And Satan will know that you are not a candidate to disgrace and shame. Because you, you call out what you need to call out. Right, right off the bat. Simple as that. You that like to go to clubs. And because in the clubs, all those lights, psychedelic lights, I don't know if they use it now, but these clubs are always dark and, and you, you know, and the women are wearing the, the, all sorts of makeup, everything, everything. They've gone to look like they have cement in their face. They've altered their, themselves. You saw, saw somebody that you thought that they are a top model. You brought them home. Now they have taken the dentures off. They've taken the eyelashes off. They, 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 they've taken the wig off. And, and you are now with a creature. With the lips like that. that. Those things that they inject. No wig. No, no teeth. No, no corset. Now the... The guts them drop down, spread across. Hey, let it all hang out. That is you. And you, 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 and because you had a few drinks, your eyesight was tampered with, and demons entered you. Now you are beginning to have a moment of reflection. How did I allow? In fact, you tell them to go, but. What you don't understand is that they've taken pictures with you. Posted it online. Tag you, tag you, tag you. I'm telling you. Satan is not joking. Demons are not joking. Demons are real. And they want to bring your level down. You, Mr. So-and-so, gym, work, and biceps, triceps. You, Mrs. So-and-so, always you in your bike, exercising, long walks. Now a monster has entered your flat. A monster has entered your flat and conquer you. And conquer you. Hey! Deliver my children, Jesus. Deliver the saints, God. Don't let us fall into any of these demonic temptations, Jesus. Have mercy, God. Let us go to Luke 8. Luke 8, 2. Luke 8, 2 reads, And also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene from whom seven demons had come out. What does the Bible says here that Jesus had cured some women, including Mary Magdalene? He had delivered them and he had cured them of many diseases. And seven demons came out of those of Mary Magdalene that was sick. And they, they were delivered, right? But the Bible says that evil spirits can cause diseases. Any disease that you have, it's an evil spirit behind that disease. That is why you should never own any disease. You go to the dentist and the dentist, oh, you have gum disease. Hey, hey, now, mm -mm. Gum disease in the mighty name of Jesus. Leave my gum, you demon of gum disease. And it will live in the name of Jesus. You go to the doctor, say, hey, it's arthritis. 
You say, mm -mm, this diagnosis, I, I'm, I'm not possessed by no arthritis. Arthritis, leave my bones, come out. You and your seven other demons that are flinting my neck, my back, and whatever. Call it out. Deliver yourself in the name of Jesus. But some of you, you've gone to the doctors. The doctors has given you a has given your child the diagnosis of the cantatitis, pantanitis, cantatitis, cotatitis, and you are there in agreement. Ticking, 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 and you take yourself to the pharmacy to go and get the medication. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go and get the medication, saints. Go and get the medication, but as you come home, say, Lord Jesus, I consecrate this medication into your hands. But I am commanding Satan and the demon of, of, of asthma, the demon of this, this, and that, ADHD, D, 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 come out of my child in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't come in agreement with you. I'm calling you to leave and lose my child in the mighty name of Jesus. Even if that has to take five years, for as long as you don't come in agreement with it, your child will be delivered. I can promise you that. Satan will fight. He will wrestle you, but in the end, he will have to let you go and let your child go or whatever family relative you are praying for. Satan will have to let us go in the name of Jesus because we don't come in agreement with him. We don't accept, hey, his verdict and his report. Whose report do you believe? I believe the report of the Lord. I don't care what the doctor is saying. The doctor is doing his job. But I'm going to doctor Jesus and I'm going to exorcise the demon. I'm going to tell the demon to leave my toe. I'm going to tell the demon to leave my head. I'm going to tell the demon to leave my house in the name of Jesus. And he has to obey. Because when the name of Jesus is mentioned, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There is, a, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Some of you, you go to the doctor, the doctor said, I have the C word and I'm going to now go under this and under that. So you told her I have. You have now said that you are possessed by whatever it is that you are now claiming. You have and you have and you have. You will continue and leave us here where we are to one day help you in prayer. Stop standing in agreement with demons. Stop standing in a, they need our agreement. Everything in the spirit, every legal right in the spirit has to be done by our agreement. If we don't agree, it will not take place. Simple as that. If somebody comes here to my house, knocks on the door and said, oh, I've got some rubbish, rubbish beans to live here in your house. They are rotten and bad. I just need you to keep them until I feel like I should come and get them. Do you think I'm going to accept that? I'm going to say, what gives you the impetus? The audacity to even come to my house to suggest such thing to me. Is my house a dump yard? Don't even try this again to come and ring my bell for foolishness like that. And I will rebuke the person. And the person will never come and suggest anything like that to me. Some of you desperados. <laughs> you the desperado sisters. And you the desperado brothers. Any woman who is texting you. Desperado number one. You are answering. The, the person has not even taken their finger from the phone. They, you the desperado number one. You are texting them back. And when they are texting you, it's because they've run the entire world and no one wants them. But you, the desperado, is willing to take them to go motel, to go and take them. You want to go and this and that because you are the desperado now. Stop being the desperado number one. When will you put some respect on your name and some value, add some value to your name? When will you? Oh, but sister Dalila, I'm not getting any younger. You are not getting any younger, but worse. At least some people are getting older with a reputation. You are getting older without a reputation. And you see what I'm saying? Some people are getting older. They're not married. They're not this. They don't have children. But they are, all of that is happening. Their reputation is intact. You know reputation, but you are still getting old, gray hairs, and all and all, and you are still a spinster. You are a desperado number one. In fact, you are the champion of all desperados. In fact, all desperados headquarters, you are the president. And you, you, you are the spokesperson. Anyone who is dangling something, something, you've gone there. 
And what you don't understand, you are just collecting demons and demons and demons. You are the dump yard of Satan. Satan just comes and dump, 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 dump. And you spread across wide open to anyone. Everyone knows what kind of briefs you like and what kind of perfume you wear, everything. Because you are just a desperate. You think that because you will comply with them, they will marry you. It's a lie. They will leave you and marry your neighbor. And you will just, you will just see on Facebook po them posting the, 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 the wedding bells, wedding bells. I'm telling you, Satan is not joking. He wants to, br to bring you down. And then show you to do all the demons. Look at this one. We've chewed her. We, we, we finished him. I'm telling you. Never you be too desperate for anything. We are the children of the living God. If the job opportunity has not yet come. Don't sleep, because, don't sleep your way to any job. If, if, if they won't marry you because you won't sleep with them. Your integrity must remain intact. It's God that blesses people. It's not man. If they are coming to you to say, hey, if you love me and I, I have to try it to see if it's good or not me marrying you, they are not for you. That is not your husband. Bo has never suggested to, to Ruth that, hey, let us sleep and hey, do something, something and get funky nooky for me to see if I can marry you. He never did that. He married the woman straight away. The woman was a widow. She, 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 she was married before, but he married her. He married her. And Boaz had not been married before because the Bible doesn't tell us that, that Boaz was married. That was his first marriage. When God is ready, he will be ready. Stop giving yourself as cheap goods. Carry and go is you. Carry and go is you. And men as well, you know, it's not just women. You are carry and go. Your cash is always ready to spend on, 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 on dirty women. Be very careful. One day when your manhood begins to rot and your womanhood begins to rot, then you will then 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 when your goods have expired, there will be no transaction. Who will marry you? Who will marry you? There are people that are 50 getting married for the first time and having children. I'm telling you, I saw the other day a woman was dancing, dancing, giving Jehovah praise. Married at 50, pregnant at 51. Praising God online. All her haters. Hey, look at me now. I've made it. You. Let it all hang out. You will never sing songs of joy. I'm telling you. This is not a joke. I know people. And I'm not trying to run down anyone. I know people that dated somebody for 10 years. The minute they finish, the minute that woman finish building them up and they now have a vehicle and they now have a job and they're now having cocoa butter to butter themselves. Now they have gone to marry somebody 10 years younger and they didn't even notify them. They just saw it they, 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 on, on, on social media. I'm going to tell you a personal story. A good friend of mine dated this guy for many, many years. I don't even know how many years she dated him. And they arranged the marriage because she, all of all that relationship, she sponsored number one. Number one, ladies, you can never sponsor a man. Stop paying men school fees. If his parents can't pay school fees, you are not going to pay either. You are not the, the savior of the universe. You're not Superman. Anyway, let me not digress. That lady, everything in that relationship, she's the one sponsoring left, right, and center. They arranged everything to get married and this, 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 and that. And the mother, because the mother of that, my friend, is well off. She the venue, everything, catering, all oh, this, this, and that, all these different things. People were already sending gifts. How do I know? Because one of the bridesmaid, the chief's bridesmaid, is my good friend as well. She's the one who, who, who gave me this information firsthand. 
as they were all receiving the gifts, spiking them, getting measurements of the, the, the whatever to make sure they all slept in a hotel because they all wanted to be together, the bridesmaids and the bride, so that they could all leave to the venue. That specimen of a man, because I don't call him a man, he's a specimen. Call that young, well, she, we were in her 20s, 26 she was at the time, or 27. Call that young lady at that 10 o'clock, 10, 10 something o'clock, and, and, said, and, <laughs> and said to her, I'm, I've lost the feeling for all this thing. I've really lost the feeling. I'm not feeling it anymore. A man is not feeling it. Um, you see, men that have too much feelings, run away from them, especially those who like to cry. It's them you need to run from them. Alligator number one. Chameleons number one is them. I've lost a feeling. She said, hey, but what do you mean? She's now panicking. She's sweating. I don't want to go forward with this anymore, so I'm calling it off right now. Phone, boom. Hang, he, 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 he put down his phone on the girl. And the bridesmaid, she's crying. Them, everyone is flocking around her. What happened? So she, she told them what, what was going on. Now they are phoning him back. His phone is switched off. And that man, that young man, after a month, got married to another girl. He got married to another girl. That, my friend... That friend of mine was so depressed that she was admitted into for psychiatric help. Had to travel to another city because the shame was too much because the mother had to re re call each one of the guests, which were plenty of them, just to call off the wedding and, and just say to them that, look, it's not going to hold. And cancel the venue and everything. The, the mother had to give away the food. The, 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 the food that was catered to the venue. She had to give it away. All the money that was wasted in for everything just gone down the drain. I, that story, I can tell you for fact. I, 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 I follow that story and it hurts me. Although, she, you know, I mean. But you see, when you want to try to sponsor people. You're, too, you're desperado, number one. We are not desperate people, saints. Desperation can, can land you into a very, very dark place. I'm sure he was already having something with that young lady and he, he didn't want to marry her. It was all because of this. But probably he thought, well, I've got a career now. I've got a good job. I can stand on my own. And there are many, many stories like that. In fact, when I told my mom this story, my mom had her own story of her own friend. Something similar happened to her friend back in the days. Wait. Those of you impatient... You don't know that the impatience is, impatience is caused by demons so that you will make mistakes, so that you will commit adultery, so that you will land in a place that you shouldn't be. Okay? And know this, every disease, every disease, every pattern of reproach, there is an evil spirit behind it. There is an evil spirit behind it because Luke 8, 2 tells us so. When the women were cured of evil spirits and the women were cured of evil spirits and diseases. Evil, you think that you are depressed and you need to go on medication. You need to take this medication and that medication. No, it's an evil spirit that is sponsoring the depression. It's the evil spirit that is whispering that you are no good, you are ugly, you have no purpose. You shouldn't be in this earth. 
Your family doesn't need you. You are too ugly. You are too short. You, you are no good. Look at the other girls. They are more beautiful than you. What is the purpose of you being alive? It's an evil spirit that is whispering that into your ears. So that you will unalive yourself. So that you will be so depressed that you will never become that that God has spoken over your life. So that that greatness that is in you will never manifest. Main purpose for Satan to keep people depressed. He's, he uses evil spirits to keep many people in depression. In serious depression. While you are depressed, you cannot go after your education. You cannot better yourself. You cannot chase your dreams. You cannot pray. You cannot seek God. You cannot do anything for yourself. You just sit down and pity, 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 pity yourself. You cannot look at yourself in the mirror and say, hey, my nose is too big and it's spread it all across. But hey, I'm still something. Look at me. I'm still stopping the traffic. You can't say that because why evil spirits are telling you that you will never get married with that your nose. You will never get married with that your small lips. You will never get married with that your, those your big ears. Yes. All lies from Satan. And I'm going to say to you, when I first came to Europe, I was 18. Is when I began to feel depressed. Because I wanted a tiny nose. Like my white friend's head. I want those little noses like that. I wanted to, you know, have have my hair different. More more wavy like, like those girls. Look at me. How am I going to have hair like that? How am I going to have... How am I going to have... Or small nose like that when I'm half black and half white. It's not. It's never going to happen. A nose is big. My hair is what they call kinky curly. It is what it is. But I, I, I was feeling depressed because why? The Western standards of beauty. I didn't have them. So I was feeling like I'm, I'm a nobody. Oh, yes. I was constantly buying wigs and weave-ons and everything because I didn't, I wanted to have that hair like Farrah Fawcett. I wanted to have that kind of aesthetic and I wanted, I wanted to have green eyes. So I was buying contact lenses and all these different things because I never had problems when I was back home. Back home, I was normal. I was just like anyone else. But as soon as I came to the Western world, I hated myself. I started to hate things about myself. Even today, I have to fight. And slap myself and say, hey, get back into alignment. Because evil spirits were whispering that you are not worthy. You are not this. You are not that. You don't have this and you don't have that. Until I understood that that was a spiritual attack against me. Diabolical attack. To keep me depressed. So that I have no confidence to, to, to get on with what God has commissioned me to do. Because how can you live and get on with business that God has given you to take care of? How can you? If you are constantly in, in, in suffering of low self-esteem, of com complex of inferiority. You wanted to be a certain color. Me, I wanted to be a certain color. I wanted to be have a certain complexion. I want to have a certain hair and everything. I'm castigating myself day and night. I'm never happy with who I am. I even got a cream to remove my freckles because I have freckles. I don't know if you can see it with this freckle, with this filter, but I have a couple of freckles around here. I wanted to destroy myself. So I want to say this to you. Evil spirits will bring mental illness. Why are you depressed? Because they are diseases of the mind, right? But they are sponsored by evil spirits. You begin to compare yourself to others. And you don't know that that anxiety to keep comparing yourself to others will then be begin to bring autoimmune diseases. Because the longer you linger in depression, then 
the devil knows that the, 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 all diseases start, start with the mind. If the mind is not healthy, the body will suffer. So then more evil spirits will then come and possess your body. Now you are the autoimmune diseases. Now you are losing your hair. Now you, 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 your teeth are wobbly. Now you, you, you have this, you have that. Things that you never had it before. But the depression came first. That was the first evil spirit. And you didn't cast out that evil spirit of depression. Now the body is developing autoimmune diseases. You see how it is? But you are delivered today in the mighty name of Jesus. You are delivered today in the mighty name of Jesus. You are delivered today. You are delivered today. You are delivered today in the mighty name of Jesus. We cast it out in the mighty name of Jesus. We command it to leave and loose hold against us and over our bodies, our minds. Our, you are you meant to deliver your mind every day. Because if you don't, if you don't cast out whatever it is that is causing that little feeling or that thought, it will grow. And then tomorrow you can't read the Bible because you are so depressed. I'm telling you. Diseases of the mind. Every disease starts in the mind. That is why also you have to be careful with unforgiveness. That is another area that the devil is using to possess many. Once you cannot forgive people and you are constantly in bitterness, in resentment and in unforgiveness, evil spirits will come and begin to take possession of your body. You, be, you will become a resentful person, a, hey, a person filled with hatred. And that will then make you uh, cross the bridge to begin to practice witchcraft. You want the person to be unalive. You want the person to be no more. You want the person to pay. And you begin to be proactive in seeking means for revenge. You see how the devil is? I'm trying to cover all the angles, saints, so that you can see how the system of demons keeps many of us oppressed. How it works, how it functions. Know your enemy. When Muhammad Ali used to go to box his opponents, he used to watch all the fights from when they began box the boxing career. He used to watch over and over and over and over again to study them and think of the best technique to defeat them. Some of them he understood that if he, there were people who are more energetic at the 15 to the 20 minutes of the, the, the fight. So what he would do, he would, he would use the technique of making the opponent tired. He would tire them out. And after 20, 30 minutes, they had no energy. Then he would strike. He would begin to box them and box them. Because he had watched the tapes continuously of whomsoever he was fighting. And he was a champion. The rest you already know. But I'm a person who studies these things. I read a lot, you know. You might not believe me. And he, that is how Muhammad Ali was able to, to, to win so many fights. He never underestimated the opponent. He studied them. What do they like to eat? What is the exercise? What kind of discipline they have? How do they exercise? How many times? How many hours? What is their technique? And you will study them and then think of a strategy to defeat them. And that is what we are doing here on this live stream. We are studying the kingdom of darkness and how demons operate so that we can be victorious. So that we will not fall into temptation. All right, saints. So that we can be victorious. So that we will not fall into temptation. All right, saints. Jesus, he, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately. The boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. 
You deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you to come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can only come out only by prayer and fasting. So saints, this is an account of an epileptic boy, a boy with, this, with epilepsy. Epilepsy today, no one is telling you that is an evil spirit that causes that. When a person goes into a convulsion, they can, they could be crossing the road. They would just drop there and the car would run them over. They could be cooking and they will fall on top of the pot. They are very dangerous because they can have this feet anytime. And this demon will choose the most dangerous time for them to have a feet. All right. Not only this child had epilepsy, but was also deaf and dumb. And we can see that Jesus cast out that demon of the deaf and dumb demon. All right. Jesus cast it out of the boy, the deaf and mute spirit. Jesus cast out the spirit that was causing the epilepsy and also the spirit of deaf and mute. And the child was delivered. The boy was delivered. Remember, it doesn't say young man. Boy means a child. Some of you that have a child that is mute, a child that is deaf, begin to call out that spirit and cast it out of that child continuously. And listen what Jesus said. When Jesus went indoors after he had um, conducted this deliverance service and the boy was delivered, the, the disciples were curious. How is it that they prayed for the boy and the boy was still possessed? And Jesus gave them the secret. This kind of demons can only be cast out by fasting and prayer. All right? Without fasting and prayer, you cannot cast out these spirits. So some of you that are fighting a battle at home with demons... Demons making your children sick. Demons causing autism, ADHD, bipolar disorder. You need to be a woman or a man of God or a couple of fasting and prayer so that that child can indeed be delivered. Because these evil spirits are very strong and fasting and prayer is a must for you to be able to get the victory. Is everything okay with the internet, saints? Can you? Many people are complaining with the internet. I, can you hear me right? Is the internet okay? Yes. All right. So precious saints, this kind of demons, there are certain castes of demons that can only be um, cast out by fasting and prayer. And do you know that many of the new Bibles are actually erasing, deleting, get that, that the, 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 the fasting, all right. Certain Bibles now are changing this scripture and are only mentioning the prayer, but they don't mention the fasting. This is happening. For you to understand how prayer and fasting is so powerful. Why is Satan so concerned in taking this specific scripture out of the Bible? Why? Because Satan knows that if you are fasting and praying in the spiritual realm, you are stronger and you have more authority in the spirit to cast out certain demons. And depending on the kind of principality that you have, let me go back and come back, saints. Many people are complaining of the internet. Give me just. And depending on the kind of principality that you have, let me go back and come back, saints. Many people are complaining of the internet. Give me just. There are certain demons that can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. Prayer alone won't do it. And depending on how many demons there are, you are probably going to have to fast a year, two years. 
because for how long was you were you involved in the occult for instance for how long were you involved in fornication perhaps you conceived that child in fornication you were not even married perhaps you conceived that child that's why it's very important don't conceive children out of wedlock conceiving children out of wedlock you are giving permission to evil spirits to possess your child with many infirmities because why you are having a child out of wed wedlock only married people have a license to have sensual relationships if you are not married you don't have a license you don't hold a license it's like one trying to drive a car without a license if the 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 the, the, the traffic uh, police catches you they will fine you and then you could potentially even go to prison simple as that many people depending on because listen we need to be transparent with ourselves. You that are praying for children, what was your... Were you born again when you conceived that child? Number one. Because if you were not born again, you were in sin, right? And by you being in sin, the Satan used that to possess your child with whatever spirit that you are now struggling. Your child has autism, your child has HDHD, diabetes, cancer, whatever it is. What was your condition when you conceived that child? Were you living in sin? Were you living in adultery? Were you living in fornication? Were you living in what? What is it that you were doing? You're going to have to go back and not, not to condemn yourself. Because Jesus with his blood, he has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. But write down every sin that you were living under at that time when you conceived that child. And repent of each one of the sins in the mighty name of Jesus. By you repenting from each one of the sins, you are actually breaking the, 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 the legal right to that child. You are saying, Satan, you no longer have access to this child. I have repented and you, you begin to plead the blood of Jesus. All right. Once you do that, the legal right has been broken. There is no legal right anymore because number one, you've repented and you pled the blood of Jesus concerning each sin and you receive from forgiveness from God. Now you can embark on this journey of fasting and prayer for your children and they will be delivered. They will be delivered. I'm telling you they will be delivered. But it's a process. For instance, the process of deliverance of a witch is not going to be the same as you that you had no, you had no, um, you had not sold your soul to the devil. You were not working for him. Do you understand what I'm saying? So some of you, you think that because you prayed one, two months, things should be happening. It depends of how your involvement was with the darkness, with the kingdom of Satan. It depends. If you were a stripper for seven, eight years. And now you are struggling with rebellious children. You can't expect in three months to, to, that your children will just come to Christ. You can't. You're gonna have to keep fa if he, you're gonna have to keep fasting and praying. It might take seven years as well. Which because why? Every demon is will be cast out this time, tomorrow, another, then this one, then that one. All right. So. Stop thinking that your process of deliverance is going to be instant. Some of it is, but some of it is not. Because sometimes these are legal agreements that our family members made and we are not even aware. Do you know that when you go into fasting and prayer for deliverance, God will begin to show you in the dreams, in your dreams, what your family did. I remember when I, I first came to Christ, I used to have a lot of dreams with, with the marine kingdom and, and, and water and all these different things. And I, was, and, and I began to have all these dreams and I, I had to sit down with my mom and understand why am I having these dreams? And my mom began to explain to me that I come from a bloodline of, um, um, of the women in my mother's side of the family, right? They were priestesses for the goddess of the sea. And they were initiating other women, so much so that my great-great-grandmother, 
she died because she was initiating as a, as a high priestess, she was initiating some young people, some young ladies into the goddess um, of the sea um, um, religion. And she came out of the sea because she used to, normally these priestesses of the sea, they go, they can stay in the water for a month and they will come out with all sorts of herbs and things to give people and people will be healed and all these different things. So, um, I had to understand that I was dealing from my mother's side of the house, the mother's side of the family with marine spirits. All right. So I had to fast and pray and I fasted for many, I fasted for three years and I never gave up. I kept fasting, breaking legal rights, breaking agreements, breaking legal rights, breaking agreements. Meanwhile, living a life that was pleasing to God. All right. So, sometimes in that process, God is going to reveal things to you. God is going to show you things and you're going to have to ask your parents. So me, that I come from a family line of Sangomas, including now that I'm talking to you, I have an auntie from my mother's side that is still practicing that religion. Okay? She's, she's a high priestess. She doesn't want to, to know Jesus. She does, she, she's happy with her religion. All right? So... I had to break legal agreement that I'm not I'm no longer gonna comply with that because what happens is that these demons are generation. So as I'm here, I should have been taking that office to service those demons. Me, I'm not doing it. I'm serving Christ, I'm washed by his blood. So God is gonna begin to show you in dreams if your parents are diseased, deceased. God will show up in your dreams and show you. God will show up in your dreams and show you. I remember I was even praying for my father's side and I, I had a dream that I was back in the 1930s in old day Portugal with very old people. And God was showing me what I needed to pray on my father's side of the family. There were a lot, loads of altars that needed to be broken. And God showed me in the dream. So allow God as in that process of deliverance. Okay? Allow God to show you, to reveal things to you. So that as you pray and fast, God will begin to show you what you need to pray. All right? That is why you're going to need to tap into the prophetic by saying, God, show me. For me to be delivered, I need to, 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 to see. Sometimes you are praying for a child, but you don't know what spirit to cast out. But you will have a dream. What is the spirit? God is going to show you. So that in the morning when you get up, you will cast out that spirit that God revealed to you in the dream that is tormenting you or your child or tormenting any of your family members. But prayer and fasting is key. Without prayer and fasting, there is no divine revelation. Without prayer and fasting, there is no authority for certain demons. Certain demons, you will cast them out like that. But certain demons, you're going to have to fast and pray. And that is why some deliverance services, um, the people who are actually there to, to conduct the deliverance service will tell the congregation to also fast along. It could be seven days. It could be 14 days. And sometimes the fasting will be a prophetic fasting. God will give you dates. You need to fast from this time to that time. Sometimes when you are fast, fighting certain principalities and rulers of darkness, you yourself will feel an urge to fast. The Holy Spirit will call you into fasting. 
That's why sometimes you are more prayerful than, than other times. Sometimes you are more um, willing to fast than other times because the spirit of the living God is moving you into that, in, the, in the direction that you need to go in order to be delivered in a certain area. All right, because we have submitted all to Christ, right? So let Christ reign and show you because each one's process of, the, of deliverance is different because I don't know what you've been involved in. I don't know. I know that process of deliverance for people in my family is very difficult because of the kind of commitment um, people had with demons and actually serving them. Can you imagine? I come from a family that of high priestess, people that are high-ranking sorcerers. So my process of deliverance was not simple and easy. As a matter of fact, until today, I'm fighting because sometimes those demons try to come and I can see them and trying to call a, a certain pattern to reinforce in my life. And I have to fast and pray because deliverance must be maintained. Deliverance must be maintained. You are delivered today. It doesn't mean that you relax and you don't fast anymore and you don't pray anymore. In fact, because you've been delivered, you need to pray and fast more than you used to pray and fast before. Because Satan is like a lion seeking who he may devour. He will come and check you. He will come and monitor you. He will come and assess you so that if he finds you um, as vacancy, he will call out seven more demons and come to afflict you even worse than he afflicted you before. So stop thinking that because you got delivered, that's it. You don't have any work to do. No, you were delivered to maintain your deliverance in Christ Jesus. You were delivered, but you have to man maintain that deliverance. And how do you do it? Fasting and prayer, consecration to God, studying of the word of God, meditation, Okay, if you are a person, for instance, that you come from a family that has a, a pattern of poverty. Yeah, you, you now know that to defeat the pattern of poverty in, in your family, you're going to have to fast pray and you cannot rob from God. All right, you're going to have to always tithe and give your offerings and help the poor. That is how you break the altar of poverty in your family. That is how you paralyze that demon of poverty. All right? By fasting, prayer, don't rob from God. Give your tidings, your offerings, help the homeless, help the poor. It, within your means, if it's one dollar you can give to the poor and the homeless, give it. If it's two dollars, give it because you need to maintain the deliverance. All right? Because Satan will use our own violation of scripture to come and attack. If you notice that you come from a bad line that suffers from spirits of depression, of infirmity, fasting and prayer is very important. Constant reading the word of God, observing the commandments. You, you honor your body as the temple of the living God. That is very important. Some altars of infirmity were erected because we come from families that, that are greedy. They eat sugar and everything. And now the entire, how do you think that when you go to the doctor, the doctor asks you, who else in your family has diabetes? And you say, oh, my mom, grandmother, great grandma, everybody in your family has diabetes. Because why? A spirit of greed entered your family and begin to possess the women in your family to eat sugar, 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 not to exercise. And that demon began to create a, a, a sedentary life lifestyle and everything. Demons sponsor also lifestyles that are destructive. All right. So if you come from a family that has a certain infirmity, study. Some, some infirmities is because of habits. You will notice that families that have a problem with arthritis are families that are always constantly um, fighting. They don't forgive. There is also a pattern of dysfunction in a family where everyone hates one another. Th th then the spirit of arthritis comes and begins to cripple. The it, this, these are scientific studies. You don't have to believe me. All right? You don't have to believe me. 
So there are certain diseases in families that are sponsored by lifestyles that are destructive. You will notice that families that obesity, they're all obese. Because why? They don't eat healthy. And has been in the family certain di a certain diet that is destroying that family. For instance, um, um, you will notice that if you come from a poor family that didn't have much to, to give you as for food, when, go, when you will notice that you will overeat more than other people. If it's cake, you must have half of it. Let me tell you something. I'm not saying something that I've not lived, you know. I came from, I come from a family that suffered a lot of poverty because of what witchcraft always brings poverty. All right. So I am a, a person that I have to watch what I eat. Because I didn't have many things when I was a child. So when I, I used to see them as a teenager, I just wanted to eat and eat and eat. And make myself sick. So you have to understand what kind of background you are coming from. If, for instance, you come from a family that your father was very promiscuous. Your father never got married to anyone. Your father was just busy around having children and had you as well as one of the many, many children he has. You need to understand that you will be fighting with the spirit of perversion that will want you to continue what from where your father stopped. In fact, if you are a male child of that, of that man, you will want to continue to the cycle of your dad. And if you are a young lady, you will notice that you are promiscuous and you will live a promiscuous life and you, want, you yourself will have difficulties settling down and getting married. Because why? There is a spirit of perversion that follows your bloodline. That doesn't want anyone to get married, wants everybody just fornicating, sleeping around, and not settling and having children out of wedlock. It's a pattern, and it fo follows a certain family. If you, if you will notice, your grandmother was a single woman, your mother was a single woman, and now you are continuing from where they stopped. All right? Some of you men that like to commit adultery know that you are inviting a demon to enter your house, that your daughters will only be attractive to married men and married men will always be enticing to your daughter. So very careful. Stop sinning. Break that generational curse by stop sinning. Break that generational curse by stop sinning. Whatever it is your sin, know that there is a demon behind that sin. All right, it starts with a sin. When you sin, you invite demons to possess you. When you sin, you are giving Satan legal right to oppress you. For instance, in the African continent, uh, many, many uh, clans and many countries practice polygamy. Men are married to many women. They can marry as, as many wives as they want if they are not Christians. And sometimes they claim to be Christians, but they can marry, they, they're married to two, three, four wives. There are curses that come with polygamy. Um, families cannot get on. The children will fight one another, witchcraft. The wives will fight to get dom dominance and control of the finances of that man. And then the children will struggle. As they grow older, they will struggle to get jobs, struggle to get married, struggle to have children, struggle to even have a family. And even if they have a family, the demons that came with the polygamous lifestyle of the father will fight those children so that they won't get married. You will notice that the men can't settle down in marriage. They're promiscuous. So these are things that happen. Are not coincidences. These are things that happen. It's a cycle and the demons are there to perpetuate the cycle in that bloodline. But you need to sit down and say, Father, it ends with me. From my generation onwards, I will not continue this cycle. I refuse. And you embrace righteousness and holiness and that is how you will break, break the curse. Okay? You yourself, you will break the curse by refusing to sin. I will not commit the sin that my father committed of, of having children out of wedlock. 
Even if I am, have to wait until I'm 40 to get married and have children, I I'm ready to do so, I'm willing. But I refuse to sleep around like my dad. I refuse to be like my mother that was in sleeping with different men. I will only I will, I will break this cycle. It ends with me. I'll, I'm going to be a woman of only one man, married once, and that's it. And you will notice that, the, that you adopt this posture of holiness and righteousness. You will begin to break the generational curses. And for you to remain faithful to God, you need to fast and pray. Because Satan is going to come and tempt you for you to not to for you to fall into sin again so it's by falling into sin that he will keep you as a slave to his kingdom let us go to james 4 7 i'm sorry the live stream is a bit longer today but bear with me you need this information james 4 7 saints james 4 7 reads submit yourselves then to god Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You that are fighting demons, you are fighting Satan. You must understand that you can only win this battle by submitting yourselves, yourselves to God, by resisting Satan and his demons. They will flee from you. They will not torment you anymore. But some of you, you're not submitting yourselves to God. Neither you are resisting the devil. Therefore, the devil will not flee from you. The devil will continue to afflict you. The devil will continue to send more demons to torment you, to possess you, to control you, to manipulate you. Simple as that. Without submitting yourself to Christ Jesus, you can never win the battle. All right? Without submitting yourself to God, you will never have victory over demons. You will never have victory over Satan. It's a lie. I don't care how many priests you see to exercise demons out of you. I don't care how many delivering services you attend that i don't care how many handkerchiefs you have i don't care how many how much gallons of olive oil you have in your home and 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 holy water you have in your home if you are not submitting yourself to god and if you are not resisting the devil the devil will not flee from you the devil will continue to enslave you and to oppress you sin brings slavery the reason why God does not want us to commit sin is because he knows that by you committing sin, you are actually handing yourself over to be enslaved by Satan. That's why God tells us to resist the devil. Some of you are not resisting the devil. Some of you, you're not resisting the devil. How do you resist the devil? You know that you have a tendency for alcohol. You don't go to bars. You get rid of your friends that drink. All right? You are going to get rid of the glasses in your house that reminds you of wine or beverages or anything like that. You're going to fast and pray so that you will not fall into tem the temptation of drinking. If you know that you, you have a tendency, because listen, the demon that is tempting you is the demon that, is, that wants to enslave you. And it's the demon that has been enslaving your forefathers. So, for instance, you come from a background of promiscuity, adultery, sensual perversion. That is your background. You resist the devil by fasting and praying. Avoiding, for instance, clubs, strip club, clubs, pardon me. Avoiding friendships that can turn sensual seclude yourself surround was yourself with woman of god that will keep you in check be accountable to a sister or a brother if you are a brother without you practicing celibacy and holiness and in righteousness you are never going to be able to what to resist that devil of perversion that has been oppressing your bloodline You've got to know what is your weakness and avoid search certain places that can make you weak and vulnerable. If you have you you you'd struggle with sensual immorality, avoid being alone with the, the other uh, the the the, op the, op the opposite sex. Avoid. Because you know that if you get alone with that person, you go to their apartment, you begin to listen to some certain music, whatever. 
and you know you will fall into temptation. So therefore, block those people that they normally call you and contact you when they, they want you to do certain things for them. You're going to have to block them. You're going to have to start afresh. And every time you are feeling tempted, call a sister, say, sister, I'm feeling tempted, this, this, and that. And they will pray for you. And by them praying for you and you being accountable to somebody, you will be able to conquer the, 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 the weakness. The problem with us is that we isolate ourselves. We are comfortable in being alone. We don't want to um, have a person of godly that we can confide in. And that's it. By the time you open your eyes, you've already committed a sin. You've already gone back into fornication. And you are right there where devil, the devil wants you. You have not submitted yourself to Christ. Um, therefore, you cannot resist the devil. Now you have seven more demons of perversion afflicting you. And you are now crying, depressed, and you feel like you have failed. This fight against sin, you cannot fight it alone. Okay? The warfare against sin, because it is a warfare, you cannot fight it alone. Understand this from the get-go. For you to be able to maintain a life of righteousness, for you to be able to continue to submit to God, you're going to have to surround yourself with people that are like-minded. All right? You're going to have to surround yourself with the people that are in the same struggle than you. All right? You're going to have to surround with your brothers and sisters because... As Sister Lori said, iron sharpens iron. Sister Jacqueline, sorry, said iron sharpens iron. And many of you are saying it. So therefore, if you are surrounding yourself with people that are not like you, they are okay in the mess. They are okay serving Satan. They are okay. They have conformed themselves to the pattern of this world. They have conformed themselves to the sins of this world. You are never going to win the battle. You are never going to win. You will forever remain on that same spot. You need people that will hold you accountable. You need brothers and sisters to help you fight. You're going to have somebody that can, you can confide in without judgment. Find that person. Say, Sister Dalila, today I'm vulnerable. I feel like going back to drinking and I'm feeling tempted. And then I can pray for you or a sister or a brother can pray for you. All right. So what Satan does when he's about to tempt you, he will isolate you. He will isolate you and he will begin to make you feel that um, you are a burden to others or... Or you shouldn't. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, look, look text so and so. And the devil said, oh, don't text them. You are going to be a bother to them. You're going to disturb them. And that's it. The minute you put down the phone and you don't text them uh, so that they can pray for you, stand in the gap for you, that's it. You are in somebody's bed and in, in a place doing something that you, you have no business doing. And you are in sin back again. Do you understand, saints, where I'm going with this? You need brothers and sisters and you also always need to hear the word of God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. In, in order for us to remain on the path of righteousness, we need faith in God. You see, some of you think that coming to the live stream every day is too much. I can come every now and again. You need to come every day because every day God is chastising all of us, pruning us. God is disciplining us all. God is busy doing it every day. Some of you that you can think that ah, I can take a day off today. I don't feel like... Listen, and when I say the live stream here, it could be that God is leading you somewhere else, but for as long as you continue to hear the undiluted gospel, because how will you be convinced, convinced of your sin and, and be uh, encouraged to remain in the path of righteousness if you are not listening to the proper gospel? You are listening to motivational speakers, disguised as pastors. You are not going to feel the conviction that, look, hey, I need to live in, in righteousness. You are not going to feel that conviction. You are not. 
you are not going to feel that conviction. You are not. Because you are in spaces, in places where your sin has been accommodated. If you are in a congregation and they're not, they're not preaching righteousness and holiness, that means that that congregation is no longer catering for your needs. Your need is to hear the truth every day so that you will not go back to fornication, to adultery. You will not go back to lying, deceiving, cheating. Um, you are not going to go back to stealing, raising false testimony against others. You are not going to go back to gossip. You are not going to go back to greed. You are not going to go back to whatever it is that you are that, 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 that is your weakness. But if you are not in, in a congregation, you don't have a man or a woman of God that is preaching that constantly and embedding that in your brain. How will you conquer? How will you be able to overcome? You are, you are not going to be able to overcome. You are not. Okay? Some of you, you for instance, take the Sunday to go and re-watch all the live streams back to back because you want to be reminded of what God has warned you previously. You don't want to go back to your sin. You are constantly checking yourself, examining yourself. And in order for you to do that, you need, you need a Bible-led um, church. Because many churches are not led by the Bible. They're led by feelings, emotions, needs, and whatever it is. Okay? Okay? The word of God does not come to make us comfortable. It comes to challenge us in our sins. Simple as that. Let us go to 1 Timothy 4.1. 1 Timothy 4.1. 1 Timothy 4.1 reads, The Spirit clearly says that in the latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Many people are being possessed by demons and evil spirits and deceiving spirits because of the people who they are listening to. And the Bible is clearly pointing us to the latter times. We are the generation of the latter times that is abandoning the faith to follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. They are telling you that, look, the church can accommodate the anti-clockwise lifestyle and you are believing that. The church is making you feel comfortable in your mess, in your unrighteousness. The church is making it comfortable for you to be there in adultery. That church is making you feel comfortable in that bench while you are still stealing and lying and deceiving and fornicating and God knows what else it is that you are doing. That church makes you very much comfortable. That is the latter times church. That is making many, many, many pastors. They have abandoned the faith. They are out there just behaving like the world. Dress like the world. Smell like the world. Behave like the world. And they don't even care. Because they say God loves everyone. I was shocked to see the other day um, the Methodist, the United Methodist Church has now fully ordained an anti-clockwise lifestyle that is a, a queen. You know the, the D queen? So she, that man is fully, has makeup, everything, wig, everything, all that that anti-clockwise lifestyle makeup. They call it drag. The dragon makeup. And he is a minister for the United Methodist Church. And he's happy that he has been accepted and celebrated by the congregation. And is praising the congregation. So that is, a, a, you can go and see United Methodist Church. Dragon Queen, um, past a, a minister. Okay. So th this is the church of the latter times. They have abandoned their faith. That congregation has abandoned their faith. As a matter of fact, the United Methodist Church has abandoned their faith to follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. When they are submitting under that pastor, 
they are actually being taught by demons. That pastor that is the, from that church is actually filled with deceiving spirits and is teaching doctrine of demons. And he is not the only one. There is a, um, I, I was seeing Shirley Caesar attended the, the funeral of a very prominent um, gospel singer that has just passed. And the pastor that was ministering the funeral, I think, or was there to, to speak, he was there um, introducing himself and his husband. Man and man, right? And you can see the sheer shock of Shirley Caesar, the, 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 the legendary gospel singer, when she saw that it was two of them. In the and she was she couldn't hide the shock but although she didn't hide the shock she didn't pronounce herself she didn't made a statement against what she had seen because why she's more concerned over her reputation her bag and she wants to continue to flow in that kind of money there is also the clark sisters beyonce has sampled Church girl, you know the song Church Girl, she has sampled from them. And Dorinda Clark is now singing that song with the, her sisters in every church. And she was like, leave Beyonce alone. Leave her alone. At least she's got little something in there. She's got little something in there. She did not denounce that that, that, that have you seen the lyrics for church girl she's encouraging church girls to be thought thoughts thoughties to be promiscuous to drop it like it's hot to twerk and then go to church and to be promiscuous and the clark sisters are okay with that their music being sampled for that purpose so you can see that the, the, the these deceiving spirits have infiltrated the church and are now teaching the new generation. God help us. God help us. And I'm sure you that you are in the United States of America, you have been made aware of a, a, a Chinese God, the monkey God. A statue of this Chinese monkey God has been erected in the U.S. That is an older perversion right there. That, um, yes, in Texas, say thank you, Sister Melissa. You've got to study what is that God famous for? What is the monkey famous for? Tricks. So that spirit is now being released in Texas and it's going to go across all the states in the united states of america that is an altar that has been erected with the monkey god and there was an interview that the former president mr obama gave what is in my pocket and in his pocket he was showing the young lady that he also had the little monkey god in his pocket you can go and check it on YouTube. What is in President Barack Obama's pocket? He has the rosary and he has a lucky charm and he has um, this monkey god in his pocket. That's what he carries in his pocket. You've got to understand that demons are real. And demons are released to, 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 to nations by those in authority that release those evil spirits so that they can control the population. So I want you to understand, saints, that, um, oh, what is the, 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 the disease the Holy Spirit just showed me now? What is disease that is killing a lot of people now in Africa and there is a possibility becomes a pandemic because here in England, we had the first case, the M pox, the monkey pox. 
So don't you find strange that they've erected an altar of the god monkey statue in Texas. And now this monkey pox is now a threat that it could potentially be a pandemic and eradicate half of the human population. You know, saints, let us not think that life is a joke. I'm a person that I sit down before coming here to wake you up. It takes a lot of... Do you know how many times I stay studying the word of God? I study things. Other people are watching television. I'm going through documentaries. I'm, I'm going to where the Holy Spirit is leading me to. To give you information. Be serious with God this time. We, we in a time of spiritual warfare like we have never experienced before. Stop sinning. There, I believe that this mpox that is coming is, is, is what God is trying to warn us all on this live stream. Number one, the statue erected in Texas, the monkey God. The interview that a former president Barack Obama gave where he said he carries to wherever he goes in his pocket, the monkey God. Number three, the, 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 the outbreak of mpox, monkeypox, all across the world. We have the first patient in England that is, is being isolated. Don't, don't think that this life is a joke. Stop sitting down and, and committing sin. How is God going to protect you from what is to come? How is God gonna gonna protect you? Yes, brother Sia, it's commonly in West Africa, but they're gonna use that virus to enslave the entire world, to create the new pandemic and to bring in a certain um a something for you to take. It's not a joke. And you know why he has the rosary in his pocket? Because he's showing allegiance to Rome. The Antichrist, I believe, is going to come from Rome. If he's not there already. Because why? The Bible tells me all the beast that comes out of the sea. It's going to come from that Mediterranean Sea. Watch. And to finish, saints, I've been holding you for a long time, but I just needed to release this uh, message that God gave me of demons are real. I want to leave you with a comforting scripture today. Book of Ephesians, chapter 6, from verse 11 to 12. I'm not worried because today here in England is bank holiday. Everywhere is closed. So I have plenty of time. So help me God. I want to leave you with a comforting scripture. Thank you, Sister Lori, for pinning it. Ephesians 6 from chapter, Ephesians 6 from verse 11 to 12. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. So, saints, this summarizes the title for this live stream. Demons are real. And you need the full armor of God so that you can be able to stand against the devil's schemes. Satan has schemes. And what are Satan's schemes? Is an, a web, a network fully uh, developed to make you fall into sin. Because once you fall into his web of sin, then he can learn that, that he, then he can enslave you, he can ensnare you, right? For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers. I'm talking about demons, all right? Against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world. These are all demon saints, whether in the heavenlies, whether here on earth. Okay, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We are all up against these evil powers. We believers, this is our, our, 
our struggle every day. When we get up, we are up against them. So sinning is not an option. Going back to your vomit is not an option. Not fasting is not an option. Not praying is not an option. Not standing your ground is not an option. We are, we are always on this battle. Whether you like it or not, you are fighting them. The, the question that I want to leave here before we go into prayer is, are you winning the battle? Are you winning? Are you winning every day? Are you winning? Because if you cannot win the battle against sin, how will you win the battle against these the devil schemes? How will you win against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the powers of this dark world? I, do you even stand a chance? If you cannot stop sinning, you don't stand a chance. You will be a casualty. I'm just being honest with you. I'm just being brutally honest. I know this is not something comfortable, but we are not here to make, we are not here to, for the Bible to be comfortable to us. We need the Bible to be alive and we need the Bible to tell us to repent. So precious saints, let us go to deliverance prayer. We need deliverance prayer. Understand we are fasting some of us on this ministry. So this ministration is very timely and we're going to pray the deliverance prayers over our homes, our children. We're going to pray and we're going to pray and we're going to pray. All right, precious saints. Hallelujah. Abba Father, King of glory, everlasting God. O ye rock of ages, our Alpha and our Omega. We thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us, Father. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that is a great source of comfort to us. We thank you because you've never abandoned us, but you left your word as a testament that there is, Father Lord, a narrow path that we all must walk through if we are to um, enter into your heavenlies. So, Father Lord, as we submit our hearts, our souls, our spirits, and our bodies as a living sacrifice to you, we also surrender, Father Lord, our children, our family members, Father Lord, and we ask you, once more for total forgiveness of our sins and transgressions and iniquities back to a thousand generations before us back to adam and eve some of us here come from families where witchcraft is a religion some of us we married into it some of us we come from polygamous homes we come from homes where um, sensual perversion is the norm addiction poverty infirmities whatever it is but Father Lord, we acknowledge today that you have called us up to a standard of righteousness that if we are to be diligent and faithful to you, if we are truly repentant, those curses can be broken, those patterns can be eradicated. And the next family today, Father Lord, our generations will not have to suffer, Father Lord, what we have endured at the hands of Satan and his system of slavery. And Father Lord, as we all repent, Father Lord, because we all come from something. We, all, we are not here, Father Lord, to lie or to try to conceal our sins. We all have come from demonic and satanic families. And as we repent on behalf of our forefathers, on behalf, Father Lord, of Eden, even Adam and Eve that allow Satan to bamboozle them out of Eden. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, let the hammer of Father Lord, let your hammer smash every evil altar that has been erected against our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. O oh Lord, send your fire to destroy every evil altar fashioned against us in the mighty name of Jesus. Every stubborn evil altar priest, we command you to drink your own blood in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power rising up against our deliverance, receive hailstones of fire in the mighty name of Jesus. All ground open, swallow up all incantations against us in the mighty name of Jesus. Messages of evil workers against us receive memory loss in the mighty name of Jesus. Every locker and warehouse holding our blessings of wealth catch fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Invisible walls of a wall of ba barriers stagnating our destiny scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. Invisible barricades stagnating our goals scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Every trap that repeats evil circles, catch your own in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let our enemies be ashamed and brought to confusion together with those who rejoice at our hurt and pain in Jesus' mighty name. O oh God, arise and give us the weapons of war to conquer every war rising against us in the mighty name of Jesus. Any power trying to bring us down, we bring you down before you bring us down in Jesus' mighty name. Any anti-greatness powers of our Father's house, we destroy you in the mighty name of Jesus. Any anti-favor spirits, we bind you and we cast you out in the mighty name of Jesus. Our mockers shall bow before us by the power that is in the blood of Jesus and in the name of Jesus. Any dark power pursuing our destinies. Before we finish these prayers, loose your power, use your hold, loose your control upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, arise and manifest your greatness in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, arise for our sake and let those troubling us know that they are nothing before your sight in Jesus mighty name. Those looking down at us shall hear our story and shall be dazed in Jesus' mighty name. Before seven hours, thunder of Almighty God, strike the hands of any witch doctor, assigned against us and our children and family members in Jesus' mighty name. Every good gate closed against us, be opened by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Any power within us assigned to convert us to the living dead, die, die, die in the mighty name of Jesus. Every battle of our father's house saying that we will not get to the top, die in the mighty name of Jesus. Every battle of our father's the side that has stolen our destinies die in the mighty name of Jesus. Powers contesting our seat of glory will recover our seat from you in the mighty name of Jesus. We recover our kingdom from any power contesting for it in Jesus' mighty name. Any power entering into the waters to fight against us fall down and die in the mighty name of Jesus. The crown upon our heads from heaven, Lord, take us to where it will speak in the mighty name of Jesus. Every kingdom caging our star, release our star and scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. Every family delay, melt by fire of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. Every hand hindering our progress, wither in the mighty name of Jesus. Every sorrow provoking evil handwriting, be wiped off in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power that says we will, we will die in hardship, you are a liar. What are you waiting for? Die in the mighty name of Jesus. Every battle we collected from our parents, we conquer it today. We conquer it today in the mighty name of Jesus. Every hand of bitterness depart from our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Every coven manipulation scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. In the presence of our enemies, O oh Lord, catapult us the mega success in Jesus' mighty name. O oh heavens, arise, kill the enemies of our promotion in the mighty name of Jesus. Anointing of full restoration fall upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I'm asking you today, Lord God, break every pattern of evil infirmities, Lord Lord God, oppressing your children, whether infirmity of the mind, whether infirmity of the body. Father Lord, I command autism to die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. ADHD, mental retardation, die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, deliver the children who are being oppressed by this spirit of death and dumb. Father Lord, we cast it out. We command it to lose hold upon the children that are afflicted in the mighty name of Jesus. Every satanic and demonic spirit possessing our children for rebellion, for disrespect, for authority, for failure in academics. We command you to lose your hold upon these children back to the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever where you can no longer return to torment these children again in the mighty name of jesus evil cycles of infirmity break 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 and die and loose and release the children of the living god in the mighty name of jesus father lord i'm asking you today 
deliver the children that are being caged by demons that are making them function as mutes father lord cast it out rebuke that spirit cast it out and father lord cast it onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever where that demon will never be able to return to continue to torment those children in the mighty name of jesus father lord i command every pattern of depression to die by fire in the mighty name of jesus Every complex of inferiority that sponsors depression, I command you to die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, baptize each one of us here. Baptize our children. Lord, drench us, saturate us with the precious blood of your son, Jesus. Father, Lord, deliver us once and for, for all from the shackles of Satan. Father, Lord, those, Father, Lord, that are barred by demons from marrying, from getting a job, from being able to buy their first home. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, break the curses that are sponsoring those demons and making them afflict your children. And Father Lord, bind the demons that are monitoring them for evil and controlling and enslaving and cast them all onto the bottom and speed of the abyss forever and ever. Never to control and humiliate your children ever again. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father Lord, I thank you for our deliverance is complete in you, Lord Jesus. And as we are fasting and we're leaving you, Father Lord, for the victory, we take possession of our victory by faith, knowing that, Father Lord, the good work that you have begun in us, you will fully, Father Lord, finish it, Father Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I see a very elegant lady as I close my eyes. And you have a job, a good one for that matter. You have a good apartment. You have a good lifestyle, but you are not married. And none of your sisters can get married. You meet somebody today and tomorrow they lose interest just like that. In fact, they ghost you, they block your phone and they don't want to talk to you. And the only men that are interested in you are married men. Chosen one, DK, receive your deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Sister Angel Rose, receive your deliverance. Every pattern that is making you live like that, it's broken, it's destroyed, and you are delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. And all I want you to do, including you, Sister Alice Jones, you are delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Come back and testify that the Lord has redeemed you. The Lord has delivered you. That is all I'm asking you to do. All right. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King Jesus. Thank you, everlasting God. As I stand in agreement, you are delivered. You have the victory. In the mighty name of Jesus, you have the victory. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is a lady here. When your child, your son was born, there was a complication with the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord was around your child's neck and your child has a lot of um, respiratory diseases and your child also has uh, is very disobedient wants won't sit down is hyperactive receive the deliverance of your son today i'm describing how your child was born your son was born so that you will know it's you you will not have any doubts and I want you to write copy to me. When your son was born, there was a complication at birth because the umbilical cord was around his neck. And your child has developed asthma and your child cannot stay still. They say in his ADHD that he's hyperactive. Write copy to me, mother, receive the deliverance of your child. The enemy has been trying to take your child out from long ago. And the Lord wants to deliver your son today here on this live stream. From the Sister Jalisha Hall, receive the deliverance of your son. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory. I believe, Father Lord. I stand in agreement. That child is healed. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive, receive the healing of your child. Respiratory diseases in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive your healing. I, I stand in agreement with you for your child. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Abba Father. There is a lady here that you're not married. You live with your boyfriend. You have children with this boyfriend. And your boyfriend has, he smokes weed. He smokes weed and he spends all his money, majority of the money, in weed. I want you to identify by writing capital me. You live with the father of your children. You are not married, although you live with the father of your children. And he has an addiction to weed. I want you to write capital me on this live stream. There is a prophetic message for you. But I won't release it until you type capital me. All right, you need to cap write capital me. Sister Lesinga, you need to get out of that relationship. Or else your children are going to become just like the father because that is what they are seeing on a regular basis. You're going to have to make an effort and trust God to live. All right? Because um, it's not going to get any better, sister. God is showing me that not only is not, it's not going to get any better, but it's going to escalate to abuse in that house. You need to leave. You need to begin to ask God to help you to move, go somewhere and start afresh. Pray for your, the father of your children to be delivered. Fast and pray. If it is the will of God that you marry him, he will, he will give his life to Christ. And then you can take it from there. But as for now, you cannot continue to live in sin. And he's not going to get any better. He's on, on the contrary. It's going to get worse and I see domestic violence happening as well. Abuse. Not only against you, but against your sons. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone here on this live stream you would like to give your life to Christ today? You would like today to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I want you to type capital me. Is there anyone here? That would like today to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Write capital me. Don't leave this live stream without Jesus. Surrender your life to him. If you don't surrender your life to Christ Jesus. You will open your eyes when you. When you. Your journey has ended here in the land of the living. When you die. You will open your eyes in hell. Because. Oh sister Janelle Cooper 15. Welcome. Into the kingdom of Christ Jesus. Heaven rejoices my sister. Heaven rejoices my sister. You that have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Your life will never be the same again. The day you close your eyes in the land of the living. You will open your eyes in paradise. In the presence of the living God. So what has taken place today is that angels are dancing, jubilating. And angels are are really having a great time because you are prodigal daughter of the Most High God. You have returned home to be in the arms of the living Father. Now that you have fully surrendered your life to Christ, know this, that the Lord Jesus has completely, Sister Kathy Risk, welcome. The Lord has completely erased your name with his blood from the book of hell and eternal damnation. And has written also with his precious blood your name in his book of life. Hallelujah. So now that you have given your life to Christ, don't return to your vomit. Don't return to your past sinful life. You need to stop with immediate effect, fornication, adultery, sensual immorality, self-pleasuring yourself, use, using uh, sensual toys you need to um, you need to also stop lying deceiving stealing from people raising false testimony slandering gossiping you cannot engage yourself into occultic practices such as yoga meditation trans meditation um, tantric sensual activities all meditation for that matter that it is not based on the word of God. You need to also stop all the manifestations. These are diabolical. Consulting with your boards. Having your cards read. Tarot cards read. Astral mapping. 
um, palm readings, um, also um, acupuncture, um, potions, buy potions from witches, love potions, buying candles for prosper prosperity, and you need to stop all of that. Stop consulting the zodiac or your astrology map. Okay, you cannot continue to engage in in the anti-clockwise lifestyle or the alphabet lifestyle or the rainbow lifestyle. That is a no-no. The Lord forbids you. You cannot participate in witchcraft, in idolatry. You cannot worship man or anything that is not God. Okay. Um, also, um, I don't, I, I, I don't think I can remember anything else, but the saints will help me here. Um, you need to avoid all sorts of secular lifestyle like music, secular music, films, programs that glorify the world, the last of the flesh. All right. Those don't belong in the body of Christ. All right. They need to go away from you. And you need to live a godly life, a holy life and a righteous life for that matter. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say in relation to sins. If I can remember, we remember and I'm sure the same. Gambling, that's it, gambling. Cannot go venture into any gambling as well. And now that you have submitted your life to Christ and you are now a new creation in Christ Seek for a Bible-believing church where the gospel is being preached and diluted, raw and uncut. Ask the Lord also to lead you to where you need to be to be baptized in the water. Um, I would like to also invite you to um, attend the live streams. We are always gathered here from Mondays to Fridays on TikTok. 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. United Kingdom hour. Please check your Google time zone so that you will not miss any of the ministrations. On Saturdays, we do gather on YouTube instead. And for you to be able to attend the live stream on YouTube, all you need to do is go to my bio. And once you get to my bio, just below the picture, you will see the YouTube icon. Once you have clicked on that icon from YouTube, it will lead you straight to our YouTube page and you can subscribe. It's free. You don't have to pay for it. And it will give you access to previous ministrations, including this one. God willing, if I can upload it. Um, and I'm sure you will be immensely blessed by being able to have previous ministrations to guide you on this path of righteousness that we are all in. If you are here for the first time, welcome. Uh, why won't you type capital me so that we can greet you and and welcome you with a virtual hug if you are here for the first time we hope to see you back again tomorrow same time i would like to also give a scammers alert unfortunately that the, um, there has been an increase of pages that are being created every day um, using my name and image, creating fake accounts, asking for donations to uh, an orphanage in Nigeria in exchange for prayers and prophetic utterances. If you are followed by such alternative accounts, please, I urge you to block, to report and block them and don't comply with their demands. You will never get a follow from me asking you for money. If you are feel, feeling in your spirit that God is leading you to bless this ministry in whatever way you can so that you can keep me in ministry. Um, and you would like to make a donation. You can go to my bio here on TikTok. And you will see there on TikTok the PayPal information necessary for you to bless this ministry. And if you decide to do so. I pray over your lives that the Lord will bring honey from the rock to feed you, that he will give you the best that there is in the land of the living so that you can continue to be one that will never lack seed to sow in the Lord's vineyard. Hallelujah. 
those of you already supporting, may the good Lord continue to bless you so that you can continue to be a blessing to this ministry in Jesus' name. Um, I would like to pray for all of you before you leave, but I have one more um, um, another thing that I would like to remind you is that there is a possibility this TikTok um, platform will no longer be available for those of you in the United States and in Canada because it has actually been banned. All right. And I don't know if TikTok has complied with the demands, but there is a great possibility you won't have this platform from September. I'm not too sure if it's um, the 9th of the 11th, but I'm sure it's September for sure. So um, if that happens, the live streams will only take place on YouTube. That is why I'm urging you to please subscribe to our YouTube page by going to my bio and clicking on the YouTube icon there so that you can be a part of this ministry there so that you won't be disconnected if um, the platform is shut down as um, um, it was said that it will in September. Nevertheless, saints, let me pray for you before you leave. This has been a very long ministration. Demons are real. Thank you, Sister Lori, for pinning it once again. Abba, Father, King of glory, everlasting God, I so thank you, Father Lord, for um, fellowship, for this wonderful fellowship here, for your presence, for your Holy Spirit, for guiding us. Thank you for all that you have done, you are doing and about to do, Almighty God. And as your children are leaving to begin another week, Lord God, I'm asking you that you will order their steps so that they will always be at the right place and at the right time. Father Lord, I immerse each one of us here on this live stream in a pool of the blood of your son, Jesus. I'm asking you for all the blessings of Abraham, Deuteronomy 28, to be upon thy servants. I'm asking you for open doors, divine connections, or divine revelation, I'm asking you for deliverance, for healing, for restoration to take place. But above all, I'm asking you for the salvation of many souls, Lord God. And also, Father Lord, for our walk with you to be strengthened, Father Lord, so that we will not return to our vomit, so that we can continue on this narrow path that will surely lead us all to eternal life. So thank you, Father Lord, for what you have done, for what you are doing and about to do. And as I commit your children into your hands, protect them, deliver them, watch over them. Be a constant wall of fire and of protection around them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Abba Father, King of glory, everlasting God, arise from your holy throne of power and greatness, Lord God, and justice. To remember the faithful tithers and givers of this ministry, those who have not stolen from you, Lord God. They have not robbed from you. Father Lord, and remember them according to your promises in Malachi 3.10, Deuteronomy 28, and according to the blessings of Abraham. And locate today with your righteous right hand, beloved sister Lori Nobus Gray, family members Anthony, Caden, JC, Nick, Daddy Leo, Laterica, Bryson, S.J., Geraldine Collins, Alfonso, Roberta Davis, Marta Sam, Jacqueline Bogle, Colby, Brittany and Kimi, Selena Bradley, Janet Alec Belehi, Antoinette Fleming, Chantel Small, Tawana Watson, Felicia Toe, Meredith O'Brien, Serenza Simon, Jill Sample, um, husband Dishon Yardy, A. Dumas, Tyron Harris, Anissa Gale, Michelle Johnson, Karen Lewis, Angela Maria Stolder, Myrna Bonilla, Rekita Wola, parents Raymond and Renova, family members Kenley, Keisha, Kelvin, Kaylee, Cameron, Leighton, Pritt, Sister Lorian Baker, Dolores Edwards Harding, Kiana Lane, Chanel Grant, Sheila Ray, Linda St. Lega, Titi Ture, daughter Abiba Duen, parents, Leto Shokwantabam, Simone Morgan, Michelle Wallace, husband Wade, Antoinette Lewis, Natasha Fogo. Children Jordan and Junior, Mother Minnie Benjamin, R Products, China Greenlee, Asila Preston, Patrice Baptiste, Tamisha Brown, Tamisha Hayes, Diamond, Serenity, Walter Junior, and Shimori Chanel. 
the Christian Women Fellowship, Sister Sherelle, Denise Henry, Elizabeth Tadis, Sarah Oguto, Catherine Yawira, Kelvin Calix, Shade Simmons, Brenda Togo and her family, Antoinette Fleming, Bella and Tina, Jalisha Simmons, Jalisha Hall, Selena Bradley, Shanette and Noel Jenkins, Angelette Newman, Alice Jones, Denise Marshall, Venice Epton, Natosha Samuel, KC, Shane Furtado, Kasai Neilani, Kalaya Williams, Anisha Brown, Chance and Taylor, Toya Thorpe, Andrew Mayfield, Michelle Wendy Gray, Nakia Wrights, Gladys Coble, Salmon Luris, Tania Barros, Augustina Shiedo, Jalen Morton, Lashona Williamson, um, Ketchi Kamara, Carly Wade, Carlin Theus, Ilana Nelson, Chigoziria Hamzi, Beautiful Bella Boutique, Sharonda Freeman, Erin Jones, Elijah, and Brenda, Janelle Grant, Andrew Apostolo, Julian Yoba, Liam and Anthony, Daniel Durham, Yvonne, Boki Melda and Abuchi. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father Lord, I'm asking you today, arise from your holy throne of power and grace, Father Lord, and remember thy servants according to Malachi 3.10. And for the sake, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, rebuke the devourer, the canker worm, the grasshoppers, right into the source of the income in their finances, in their bank accounts, credit cards, at their jobs, businesses, ministries, in their homes, in their vehicles, and when it comes to all their property, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, and open once more the floodgates of your heavenlies and bestow upon each one of them such a blessing that they won't have enough storehouse to contain it. Father, Lord, I'm asking you today that you will, Father, Lord, Release onto their lives, Lord God, onto their destinies. Deuteronomy 28. And from henceforth, they are the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. They shall lend to many nations, but borrow from none. And when the enemies come against your servants, they shall flee from them seven ways in, very, in much horror and terror. Father Lord, they are like the palm trees planted by the river banks. They will never wither, they will never dry. They shall yield its good fruit in season and out of season. Father Lord, they are like the cedar in Lebanon, unmovable and unshakable. And everything that they touch with their hands shall always be fruitful and multiply. Father Lord, they are like the citadel on the hill, they cannot be hidden. The gifts shall continuously make room for them and bring them before great men. Father Lord, I speak over their lives. Father Lord, open doors, divine connections. I speak elevation, promotion. I speak, Father Lord, a mantle of excellence over them. A mantle of greatness, Father Lord, a garments of praise and righteousness. I speak over their lives, Father Lord, success. Oh, I speak over their lives, Father Lord, divine connections. The door that you are opening for them today, Lord God, no man can shut. And Father Lord, as far as the sun is from the earth, so shall poverty, limitation, stagnation, lack of achievement, reproach, rebellion in their homes, divorce, homelessness, joblessness, the plague, shame, disgrace, be far away from thy servants in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I speak again over your children's lives that the heavenlies will never be bronze to them, and the ground in which they stand shall never be iron to them. Father Lord, I'm asking you also that you will release from the four corners of the world all their destiny helpers to locate them today and to bless them according to what you have, Father Lord, established for them here in the land of the living. Father Lord, allow them to possess their possession. Allow them to grab hold or the keys of David, Father Lord, to be able to unlock every door that is connected to their destiny and purpose and assignment. And Father Lord, resurrect the destinies that are dying. Resurrect the purpose, Father Lord. Resurrect their marriages. Father Lord, let a spirit of revival overpower their bodies and let them be healed and restored, Father Lord, and rebuild their altars, Lord God, of consecration and prayer and fasting. So that, Father Lord, they will not fall into any temptations. 
and be enslaved by demons once again. I cover them with your precious blood, Lord Jesus. And I'm asking you, Father Lord, do it as you did to Father Abraham. Do it for them. Enlarge their coast. Enlarge their territory. Bless those who bless them, but curse those who curse them. And Father Lord, I speak over their lives that it shall forever be well with them, both here in the land of the living and in the afterlife. Precious saints, I want you to always remember that you are more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Go in peace, precious saints, and rest assured that I am constantly standing in a gap for you. And I do want to thank you as well for standing in a gap for me, for being such a great um, source of, of um, strength and encouragement. May the good Lord bless you. May you never go without your, your reward. That the Lord will reward you abundantly. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen.